Recording in progress. Cool. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey. Hello. 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 Hey. Let everyone in. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Uh, holy cow. There's so many people. Okay, let's hide self view. Perfect. Okay, oh, awesome. How is everyone? Hi. Oh. Excited. Just, just has has anyone actually watched every video? Yes. 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 You, oh, you are yes. crazy. You yes. all are crazy. I love you. You're all crazy. Okay. <laughs> um. So. This uh, today, I kind of want to do a quick a quick review. Just a high resolution, top level <clears throat> review. Should I stay on or come back from my time slot? Um, you can stay on, Vargas. I'd like for you to stay on. Or you can come back, whatever you like. We've got, so I want to do a quick overview for the first 30 minutes, right? And then we're going to have special guests, pillars of the community coming wow. together. And, and you know, some of you are veterans already and some of you are power users, so you're going to know these people that are coming on. But for people that aren't familiar, I think it's nice to, nice to see, you know, for me, it was when I, when I first started using Rome, it was all about the Rome community and just how nice and kind and selfless people are. And a lot of the reasons why what I do with Rome Book Club um, and, and with, with Matt McKinley, just allowing us to do this is just, it's, it's, it's been predicated on, on those ancestors, if that makes <clears> sense, <throat> you know, and it's when someone sets the precedent, like Chris Romehacker or, or David <coughs> Vargas, you know what I mean? It, it's uh, what they do is they set that precedent. And then everything that happens after that is like, Oh, okay, well that's how you're supposed to do it. You're, you're, you're supposed to, you know, not be a douche. You're, you're, you're supposed to, you know, be kind, <laughs> you know, not, and not be a douche. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm excited today. Settle down. Let's get professional. Let me put my tie on or something. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Standing Bebo. on the shoulders of giants. Don't do um, so, so we've got we've got a lot of people coming in. Um, I just pitched this idea to Matt McKinley, by the way. That, so for the 72 people that are here, I want to get Zonke in here next, next week. Mm. Oh. I want to get I want to get Zonke in here. Um, I don't know. It's sort of last minute. I mean, he showed up for RBC two. I think he showed up for RBC three, if I'm not mistaken. And so, I think it would be nice. I think it would be nice to hear from us, you know, and and the questions that you have in in regards to the differences between the analog slip box and what we're doing in Rome, and and how that even differs from other digital implementations. I think all of that is going to come into play. I think the the power of the block is going to come into play and also just maybe, you know, giving, uh, applause to, to the one that actually wrote the book. You know, I think what he did was really big, really letting the world know what, uh, know what this is. And I think it's, it's always nice to hear that, you know, I mean, I get a glim glimmer of that when I get these DMS, you know, and they're just like, Oh, thank you so much. And it's like, I love that. You know, it fills up my heart. And I feel like, you know, um, I think Zonke, deserves that too, just because of, you know, the people that are hitting critical masses from the RBC three alumni. I mean, come on, you know, it's that feeling of like, Oh, offloading my thinking. And so we'll see fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, hopefully you can make it out to the live session. Um, if not, if not, we're going to have a nice debriefing. Well, it'll be fun. Uh, we'll bring both groups together, both books together, and it'll be nice to, 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 if you aren't doing both books, it's nice to meet the rest of the community that are sort of doing RBC too. Um, okay, uh, people are filing in. As people are filing in, this is kind of like what I want to do for now. So I want to do a quick review of the differences between the traditional Zettelkasten and what the hell we're doing in, in Rome. So just to start off with, um, I, I guess just unmute yourself. You can raise your hand. I'll do my best to sort of help facilitate this. Um, I think it's important to know the differences because people are going to ask you, what are you doing? And then you go, Oh, I'm doing a Zettelkasten. And then they're going to be like, that's not a Zettelkasten. Where's your slip box? 
Where's your index cards? You know, and it's important to know the di the the differences in order to articulate what you're actually doing. And so I, I kind of want to just start here. Um, you know, in the traditional Zettelkasten, how how does how do fleeting notes usually work? Just jot your down your ideas down on a piece of paper that's close to you. Um, collect it and later um, process it, and then you throw it away. Hmm. Yep, that's what I wrote. I said fleeting notes are thrown away. So, so let me ask you this now. Um, okay, well, let me let me let me do this. So, when you say that, uh, just because I feel like I'll be the most familiar with how other digital Zettelkastens are. Um, so what I heard you say was that in the analog slip box, you just take these fleeting notes and then you throw them away. Correct? Everyone's in right. agreement on that? In the, in the digital, in, in other digital implementations, they do the same thing. It's fleeting notes are thrown away and separate from the, uh, separate from the digital Zettelkast in itself. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like you'll write it on a, you'll write it on a, a piece of paper, you'll capture it on drafts or whatever that looks like. And then mm -hmm. you add that you add that into the permanent notes just by creating a new permanent note in the digital Zettelkasten. Now, how do you do this in Rome? You hide them. Yes. And you use them to process your thinking. So they're conversation with you. So you can ask yourself questions and capture the things that are important to you. Um, so nothing's wasted but because they're, they're hidden away when you need them, if you need them later. Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. let me just double check here. Can you see that? Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, I think you nailed it. Yeah, um, I, I'm just gonna add, it can be skipped. Like you can skip it. In the, dig like in the Rome digital Zettelkasten with the granularity happening at the block, you can skip it. You can, you can do the exact same thing as you as he says to do it in the book you know you can just basically have a fleeting note you can you can nest it where you want but you can throw it away too and you can go straight from fleeting note straight into permanent note you can go fleeting note just write one word go straight into the literature note and then permanent note how about it's going right into permanent note if you think mm -hmm. it's good enough what is that how about how about going right into permanent note if you think it's good enough that's what i'm saying Okay. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's the beauty of it. Um, excellent. How about, I think that does, doesn't that sound a little bit, uh, I'll use the word dangerous only because like you run the risk of not having examined the thought and then, hey, you know, that's hey, Dunning Kruger and hey, so on and I, so forth. I, I, all, all I'm saying is you're going to have people that are going to go, that's not a Zettelkasten. Uh, and all I'm saying is these are just all the different conversations that I've been getting into, that I have been getting into. And in, a, in the traditional Zettelkasten, you take one word fleeting notes and you throw them away. I just wanted oh. to answer the person who said that, um, you know, the Dunning-Kruger effect and all that. Were you I, asking me something? I, 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 I was like, I completely agree, except there are things you've been thinking about for 30 or 40 years. That could go into a permanent note. Where you put the permanent note, that is a matter of creation. You got to be careful not to categorize it in an old category somewhere. I, I think that the not the fleeting yeah. note. That isn't well, that the fleeting note thing? Because you capture the fleeting notes you're thinking from the last thirty years, mm -hmm. and then you put the permanent note in depending on what else it's where it's nested in. No? Yes, Nick, Nikki, you're right, and George, you're right too. You can do both ways. It's just if you want to be able to track your thinking over time and use it when you're traversing for output later, then you're, you, can, you can do the work in abstracting out the fleeting note phase and doing the thinking in Rome. But you don't have to, is what I'm saying. So you're both right. And the flexibility is what's most important because it's what some people, because some people don't want to do all that work. Some people already know it. Some people don't want to abstract out what that really means. And that's fine. Oh, oh, oh. I like that term tra traversing for output later. The output yeah. doesn't know where the hell it came from. Yeah. So now let's move on to literature notes. How, so how, how do, how does Zonke recommend in the book? How does Lumen do it in the traditional analog slip box for literature notes? 
Again, there's no right or wrong answers, by the way. So, I mean, I'd love to hear from people that don't typically uh, speak up either. It's just a matter of, you know, let's, this is a, a, a place where we get to explore and, and attempt to the best of our ability to articulate what we know. So again, the I question think, is, yeah, please. I think they would be the reference notes, what we call reference notes, or the bibliography. Oh, uh, for, for literature notes, for literature notes. Yeah. So how, how does, how does the, how does an analog Zettelkasten or the physical Zettelkasten, how do you do a literature note in the physical Zettelkasten? It'd be in a separate slip box. Um, well, the references go to a separate slip box. Yes, but the literature notes, do the literature notes. Yes, they go in a separate slip box with the reference notes if you want to keep them because the permanent note is written onto a new card. The literature notes are summarizing what the literature is saying in your own words. So what he, he wrote uh, the literature notes on the front side of his Zettel and the reference on the back side. Isn't that what he did? Uh, in some of them, most oftentimes he would have, basically he would have a literature note, and then he would write the permanent. Well, it depends. I mean, his 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 whole flow changed so often. Let's just let's just keep it as simple as possible, okay? The literature notes he would have, and then he would add the references to that, and then put that into the bibliography. Zettelkasten. The permanent note is written on a new note in direct response to the note behind it. So. Literature, so what I have is literature notes are direct from the literature and without the need for fleeting notes. Correct? In the book, he says, you don't have to have fleeting notes. You can go straight from literature notes directly. If you understand what the author is saying, you just write it in your own words and you just go straight to permanent notes. In a digital Zettelkasten, it's same as the analog slip box, but now you have more room to write. How do we do it in Rome? <laughs> A little nihilistic, Ryan. How, 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 do, how, how have I been saying to how to do literature notes in Rome? I mean, I could chime oh, in if yeah. you want, but I'm- Please, I mean, please, come on. Yeah, I mean, so first of all, it's, it's left up to every individual the way you do it. So, I mean, aside from, you know, the little idiosyncrasies, it's, it's irrelevant. But we're taking and having a conversation, you know, with the author. So you're capturing thoughts and you're trying to dig down into what the author was trying to say. So your fleeting notes of this conversation with you, your literature notes, your conversation with the author, and you're kind of distilling, you know, their ideas. At the same time, you're referring to your own, you know, your internal dialogue and you're building your literature notes. And then between those two, the two parts of the, the tripod, as, we, as we've referred to it, then you'll move forward. Exactly. To add on to what Josh said, it's, it's you also taking your understanding with the author's understanding and then trying to merge those two concepts and see if you meet in the middle, right? Because if you've abstracted it out and you understand it, you should be able to say in your own words what the author's saying, but with what you understand about that to make it applicable. And I want to just add that it, it, it's like information. It gives you information, but it can be skipped. You can literally do how they do it in the book, but just by writing two sentences of what, what, what it means in your own words. You can skip the fleeting notes. You can go straight into literature notes and you can just write, this is what the author is saying. I'm just saying there's flexibility. How about permanent notes? I'm just going to sh show the screens. This is going to take too long. Uh, reference notes. In the analog slip box, it's meant to link back to the source material and placed in a separate slip box. That's how he says it in the book, correct? That's how they typically do it in an analog slip box. In the so basically A is analog, D is the digital, digital sort of um, anything that's a traditional folder hierarchy, digital representation of the Zettelkasten. That's ZKN, that's the archive by Zettelkasten DE, that's uh, any other folder-based Zettelkasten. Um, the reference notes are kept on the same card in the digital Gazettel cast in without having a separate slip box. Make sense? If anyone has any questions, just raise your hand too, by the way. I just want to do a quick top level overview. In Rome, 
what I've been saying is that you have an infinite amount of children blocks for extra metadata. Does everyone understand what that means? So basically you have the reference notes tag and then you can nest how many uh, an infinite amount of children blocks with the screenshot, with the author, with the created by, with the publication date, with the uh, specific uh, Zotero link or whatever that looks like. So you have all these children block underneath reference note, which you can collapse or expand when you need it. And you can also add complexity if needed by adding pages to project Zettelkastens in your reference notes tag as a child block. Again, I'm just telling you, like a lot of this is probably going to go over your head. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that when you watch this back, when you need that answer, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I get it. Yep. yep. Let's keep going. It's kind of dry information. What are you going to do? I want to make sure that everyone understands this. Uh, permanent notes. How do they do it in the analog slip box? Anyone? How do you make a new permanent note in the analog slip box? Dude, it is hot in this you, office. I'm sweating. <laughs> you write the note on a card and find where to put those cards in the slip box. You need mm -hmm. to uh, know exactly the place it goes in the fiscal box. And of course, uh, uh, select the the number and the index and stuff like that. Um, it's perfect. And then in the digital Zettelkasten, I'm just going to share my screen again. I know it's a little dry. Just bear with me here. Uh, in the digital Zettelkasten, it's the same as the slip box, but now you have more room to write, if that makes sense. And then again, with the analog slip box, you can have more than one sentence. You have the whole, whole index card there to write. You could write a paragraph if you wanted. Uh, analog slip box, same thing, but you have a little bit more room. In Rome, you don't need to have the UIDs anymore, the alphanumeric um, numbering system. You don't need that anymore because you have the index on the same block. And again, you can do the same thing as an, an analog slip box, but now you have more room to write if need be. I'm really just hammering in this idea that you can do the straight analog slip box in Rome with everything that we're doing. But because we're maximizing the technology, you can do a little bit more that the other ones can't. It's really the idea that I'm getting across. Um, in the index, right? In the analog index, you have a separate index card pointing to the different points in the slip box, right? And then this is where the sort of alphanumeric numbering system shows you where, the, where, where things are gonna go, right? That's entry points. In the digital Zettelkasten, you have structure notes. This is Zettelkasten DE uses structure notes. You have index notes, which is the traditional uh, index notes. But then there's other top-down ways of organizing the notes like a table of contents. And because the branches are visible, you don't need to have the alphanumeric numbering system anymore. And what they often use is the timestamp instead. The index is the thumbnail that goes in front of the permanent note. Yes, you're correct. In Rome, you can do the exact same thing, right? You can do the exact same thing as you can with all the other digital digital Zettelkastens and all the other analog digital Zettelkastens. But what we do because of Rome's block level granularity is that instead of the index showing us what the branches are, it's showing us what the permanent note is. In the, um, in the paper system, it's not always one-to-one -one, though, is it between... Uh... Um, literature note and permanent note. I kind of had the sense that that the way he would work is he he might he's processing a book and he's developing. Hey, here's the five or six or ten key literature notes about that, and he might just write one one permanent note that synthesizes all that, or maybe it's three or or maybe it's fifteen, right? But he it wasn't always one to one between the literature note and the permanent note. Am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how was he, how was he, how was he, where was he doing that thinking? Or he was, if you do that, he has to do the juggling of that, correct? You have to remember, I'm juggling these four things in my brain about where it links to, and then I need to remember where this goes and everything like that. 
and he he would put that on the on the permanent notes right hey it was it was you know if it, if it related to multiple uh literature notes he would just say that i think on the permanent note mm. i'm guessing actually with the... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's keep going again you have the ability to incorporate the traditional index notes the same way you can relevant notes analog slip box written on the card right typically called connected notes limited space requires high selectivity of what notes are connected so you're limited you can't have 10 relevant notes digital zettelkasten more room but then this is where the opinions start going off in different directions you have daniel ludicke you have christian and sasha of zettelkasten de you want to do structure notes or do you want to just trust in the Fogel all and add less relevant notes? In Rome, because we're not limited to pages and folders, you actually get the second level clustering with the inline block references. I feel like I have to go through all this. There's nothing I can do. Clustering can be seen by the alphanumeric numbering system. So if you have 12AC22C, obviously there's a cluster there. In the digital Zettelkasten, you can see the branches. So that's that. In Rome, you have the branches that you can see, but you also have the inline block reference numbers off to the side as well. I'm just sort of hammering through this, just so I wanna make sure that I say it all, and then you can watch back the video later. Uh, Physical differences between the analog and the digital. Analog slip box, one location, that's that. Um, can, can I, you can't move a slip box from, I mean, you have to take all of your boxes and move it. There's no timestamps. Things get easily lost. If you have a thousand notes and you accidentally put a note in the wrong position, you're gonna have to stumble upon it some by luck. There's a video that I, that I posted about Lumen adding a note and he just kept on saying, if I don't place it in the right position, it's going to be lost unless I stumble upon it later, luckily. In the digital Zettelkasten, you have the traditional folder hierarchy, uh, still keeps the index card at the center of focus. So this is an interesting idea because when you open up, say, ZKN or you open up, you know, the archive from Zettelkasten DE, it's like, it's still like you have the index right in front of you. You can't see anything besides that because it's in your face. In Rome, so, so again, I'm just gonna, and then UID is the form of the timestamp. And then in Rome, it's a little bit different because now it's the block. Now it's not that the permanent note is like this, it's like this. And so you can see everything, if that makes sense. And you can see all the work. And then anywhere you have access to your graph, you have access to your Zettelkasten. And then I, I suppose I can only hope that the mobile app is coming. You know, you have the desktop app that's still in beta. It's only getting better over time. And workflow differences. Do I miss half hour? Are we done? Okay. Mm. Um, you said this is the dumbest half hour? No, I'm sorry. I just said I missed a half hour because of time differences. Sorry. Um, uh, it'll be recorded. It, to me, this feels so dry. I don't like talking about this stuff, but I feel like we have to go over this. Um, so just bear with me here. Workflow differences in the analog slip box. You have physical index cards, physical slip box, time and focus without distractions. That's the hardest part. Uh, in the digital Zettelkasten, you have multiple ways of implementation, but there's no strict adherence to a complete workflow. So basically you can't go online and really learn one way because you'll have three different ways of doing it in three different apps. And there is no sort of standardized practice. So there isn't a way to speak the same language, so to speak. This is not dry at all. These are important distinctions. They are. I just like fun though. That's what it is, CK. I feel like I'm lecturing. Um, okay, so that's the, that, does everyone understand about that though? It's if you if you have ten different people using ten different Zettelkastens in ten different digital apps, then what happens is 
even though it's a Zettelkasten, is everyone speaking the same language or are they all different dialects? And that's the difficulty. In Rome, it can be stripped down of what's what's been working and what will work, but the added benefit is the block. Um, and then the work in the fleeting literature and reference note phases is you can't do that in any other traditional folder hierarchy. It has to be done in a block-based note-taking app. Um, we're on the frontier. We're literally on the on the technology frontier here, truly. And that's that is what it is. We are speaking the same language. I should add that as well. And more thinking can be more thinking can be offloaded. This is probably the most important part. Because you know, George George may not want to do all that fleeting note stuff because he already knows it. But then there's other people that love it. And you know, you have that flexibility. You can do whatever you want, right? But it's it's just about the more thinking that we can offload, the more we can think about the complexities of the problems that we're actually trying to solve. And I think that's it. That is it. Okay. Jeez. Hi everyone. I missed you. I missed you. Now I'm like back from the back from the depths of information. Okay, so um We've probably got another five minutes here before we um, before we dive into this. Let me just give you a little prompt here, or just a little idea of what I'm thinking. Um, just by sh like, how is everyone doing? Just just quickly, you know, I don't know how I could do this without asking the whole group. But really, I just want to know: is everyone writing permanent notes? Is everyone yes. writing into the shared graph? Okay, now is the time to do it because if you don't do it now, then you know, I, you know, you're not always going to have my attention. And it's just like, let me, I want to be able to help. And I want to help sort of, you know, snap things into place. So please spend this week writing into the shared graph, at least get one or two, and then just look for the green, green light. If you get a green light, then bye. Make your own Zettelkasten in your own, in your own graph, you know, off and running off to the races, you know, um, to give you an idea of what, what I want to go through. Actually, I should probably talk about this too. Um, what, what the rest of this week looks like, by the way. Let me zoom out. Um, I'm going to do coaching sessions all week. One-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And then I'm also going to do three office hours all week as well. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. The rest of the week looks like uh, coaching sessions all week. I'll put the calendar up uh, 1230 tomorrow. Same time as this meeting tomorrow. I'll put it into the shared graph. I think some people don't have access to the shared graph. Uh, DM me 1230 tomorrow, 1230 Pacific daylight standard time, PDT or whatever it is, shoot me a DM and I'll send you the link to the calendar Calendly. And I'm going to do coaching sessions all week. And then I'm going to do three office hours all week as well. So we'll do Wednesday, 1230 Tuesday at six o'clock and then Thursday's reading room at one 30. Those, those will be three office hours. I just want people ready. Like the whole idea is you like, I want you to be ready. And then tomorrow I'll post the CSS and template stuff for your own set uh, for your own personal graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, uh, 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 help graph for ease of access. I know that some people don't have access to the shared graph right now because they're on iPads and the, it's not loading. I'll, I'll post a link to the help graph. That's just a small lightweight graph where you can just go in and then I'll have like a little video or something. Um, CK, send me a DM on Twitter. Sorry. Send me a DM on Twitter or Facebook or whatever that looks like. And then, um, I'll send you all the link. <sighs> okay. You know, I'm sweating right now. Can you see it? I'm like yeah. listening right now. Um, writing your thinking is one thing, right? but there's going to be friction points. And today I want to focus on those friction points. So I have three people coming in today. that are already here and they're going to present some interesting things. And really the whole idea is yes, doing all the work inside of Rome is one thing, but how do we get it in? How do we get our information into Rome? How do we work within Rome? And then how do we output that? 
And so first off, we have Justin Mather, who's going to be presenting uh, Rome, uh, Phone to Rome, which is, a, which is a, a tool that Scott Block created. And super easy way. I don't want to, I'm going to let Justin speak on this. Justin, are you here? Yep. Just unmute here. yourself. Okay, cool. Um, just unmute yourself. And um, actually, you know what? You know what? Listen, here's the deal, okay? Like, I have this all planned out, but this is so, <clears> like, it feels so rigid, right? So this is what I want to do. Uh, Vlad, are you here? D David's laughing. David knows. Vlad, are you here? Yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, Vlad, um, uh, David Vargas. Uh -oh. Okay, um, how do I allow to multi-pin? Okay, you're pinned. Okay, let's just let's just chat. What's up, guys? What's up, Bo? Hey, hey everyone. Hey. Okay, Hello. I'm gonna spotlight for yeah. everyone. How can I how can I spotlight you too? Uh, add spotlight. There we go. Okay, where's Justin Mather? I need Justin. Justin, can you I'm say right something? Here. Yep, I'm right here. Okay, there we go. Uh, add spotlight, and then should I add my spotlight too? There we go. Look at that. Oh, oh, okay. Hello. Hi, guys. Okay. Throw the script out. <laughs> so, so I love these guys. The, the, the there's folks in this community where they, they just they're just right, you know, and and. Justin, Vlad, David, you guys want to just introduce yourself to everyone here to the to the Rome Book Club for the fourth iteration. Give a little background. So, sure. um, hey everyone, um, I'm Vlad. I've been using Rome for well, really long while now. Uh, probably uh, 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 an acquaintance told me about it, like uh, somewhere in. November 2019 or some such and um, yeah I've been exploring it since then and um, at some point I discovered that I can build things for it so it, I'm uh, not sure if that's the case but I think it could have been like the first extension ever uh, when uh, in like a slack group we discovered that we can like uh, do a shortcut to do like Leitner system uh, space repetition stuff better by like um, yeah um, automating writing stuff to to Rome and I think that that became a seed for for Rome toolkit uh, which is, uh, well, probably an extension some people um, around here use uh, that does uh, things like space repetition and Vim navigation and um, well, spatial navigation mode, a bunch of interesting things. Um, Basically, he paid his dues. He paid his dues in the Rome community. You know, he was one of the first, you know, it's in the Slack channel, it just he's been around. Vlad has been around. And... Um, You've got Rome Garden, which is amazing, which we'll talk about. I kind of want to save that to the end because that's the sort of like output stage. Um, how about David and Justin? What's up, guys? Hey, everyone. Uh, so I'm Vargas. Uh, I guess first name David, but I like going by Vargas too. Um, yeah, so it got introduced to Rome November 2019. Didn't really get it. Took a course, not a licensed course, like around January. Completely changed <laughs> my mindset around it. Now I love it. Uh, in August 2020, left my job to start working on tools uh, more directly with users and uh, just more in open source. And now I am the uh, or creator of RomeJS.com, um, which is the, to my knowledge, the largest library of Rome extensions uh, out there right now. And I'll talk more about that. Hey. In my section. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's I, up, Justin? I am a real or, person. Or and David is a real, or Vargas is a real person. Yes. And then what's up, Justin? Hey, hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm, I do a lot of like CSS stuff in Rome. That's kind of my forte right now. I'm hoping to do more, like more involved stuff like David and Vlad are doing, but right now I'm still tied to a job, unfortunately. So I don't have a ton of time, but yeah, but, yeah I'm really interested in kind of program, programming attention and like improving productivity through automation and tooling and stuff like that so try to help eddie so let me ask you let me ask you all a question D 
you can't say because you asked, right? But what I want to ask you three is, why'd you show up? Um, I showed up because one, you're a great friend, bro, Bo, and a great supporter of mine. So I need that one to get back to you at least. <laughs> um, but also, um, like why, or this seems like a, you know, the, the range of experiences, uh, in this group ranges from like beginners to like very experienced from users. And I think that wide range of experiences, uh, we like offer uh, extensions everywhere, uh, everyone that could fulfill any range of those experiences. And so uh, I think there is something that, are, something that we can offer to anyone, uh, regardless of where their room journey is right now. Hmm. Why, why do you care though? Why is that important? Why do you want to help people? I like asking simple questions. Because it feels good, Bo. It feels good to help people. It does. Um. I just help like gardens grow. <laughs> Literally. Yes. How, how much work does it take, Vlad, to work on this? To let, to let gardens bloom? Yeah. Um, <laughs> how much time have you put into Rome Garden so far? I, I've been working on it um, probably since January. Um, like, uh, I well uh, of course i have like a day job at least for three more days um so um yeah um but like uh uh probably like uh, uh so and, and i've been taking off like a day so uh, a big chunk of time since january was um from garden um yeah, uh, helping people uh, publish their work, making it um, like as smooth ex as experience as possible. And, and yeah, uh, See, that, keep that's iterating what, yeah. on it. Yeah, but that's what I love about all, all three of you. It's just like, you're there. It's all that time. It's all that time where people don't see, you know, it's all that time that, it's just you and, and the coding and you and testing this out and you like going, okay, I think this will help the community. And sure, there are services that you offer in order to stay afloat, which I think is smart because the last thing you want is to spend all this time and then, you know, have no financial, you know what I mean? That having that financial, you know, monetary sustainability is tr truly important, but there's also that sort of, yeah, but you're also doing it because this is going to help. It's going to help people. And, and I think that's what I'm drawn towards with all three of you, you know, and, and Justin is going to be presenting um, the phone to roam. And it's just like, you know, me, me, you and Scott have been on meetings, me, you, you know what I mean? All, all of us have been in meetings for the last month, like every week, literally. And I, I go, why, what would make us come together like this? And I think it's because of, of Rome book club. Like, look at this. We have 103 people on right now and it's, you know, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, you know, or Sunday evening. Like we should be at the beach. Like, what are we doing? You know, we're talking to a bunch of little rectangles on this interwebs, but I think it's, it's, I think it's that though, you know, it's that wanting to help other people. And so I think I just want to lead into Justin, you know, Justin, you know, you want to t talk a little bit about what phone to Rome is, how, how this, you know, a little bit about Scott, I don't know if I, like David might be able to speak a little, I think he knows Scott a little bit better than I do, but I mean, Fontrom, as I understand it, is a service that you sign up for and then you can pretty much text and those text messages will make their way kind of automatic, like automatically into your daily notes page. So let, can... let me just do a temperature check here real quick. Does everyone know that, by the way? No. So I see, I see some shake i see some thumbs up and i also see some shaking heads so can you say that again so basically you can text yes yeah, look at all much. these nose yeah look at all these nose bro can you explain that a little bit um i mean yeah you text it there's configuration options uh so you could i mean do you want me to just start sharing my screen or do you want me do to do it. the high level no no do it do it do it all right 
so uh so david and vlad uh he's basically stealing your thunder right now because this is do dopeness I'm, yeah i'm not trying to steal anyone's thunder i'm just <laughs> wanna, I'm just trying to share what has helped me it's a, it's a positive uh, sum positive sum game bo yeah it is <laughs> yeah so i put this just for everybody's sake i put this in the rbc foregraph perfect so yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll start from the top and then anybody can just like interrupt me if going too fast or if anything needs to be explained better. Okay, you're going too fast. You're going too fast. No, right. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Phone to Roam. And like I said, you guys can follow along. Just search for Phone to Roam demo in the graph. But just, yeah. Uh, phone to Roam is made by Scott Block. He's this cool guy that we, Bo and I met. David, I think, knows him as well. But yeah, I'm going to focus mostly on quick capture workflows that allow you to send data to your Roam Graph through text messages and other services. Um, mine's mostly going to be focused on text messages because I haven't, I don't have a Telegram or Facebook Messenger, but I think that he uh, also supports those services. Uh, so I'll be kind of sharing like how to set up phone to roam and then as well as like how to set up if you have uh i have an iphone i don't have an android phone but i'm i'm super open if if other people want to help so so bougie. To this huh you're so bougie for what blue oh blue because bubbles. of the iphone yeah, blue bubble i'm just having fun right. sorry sorry guys everyone's so serious <laughs> today I think so I set the tone with that long informational, like, hey, this is all the different. Let's just, yeah, we're, we're cool. We're having fun. Let's make this happen. Please, sorry. So, yeah, eventually, like, what we're going to have is I, I, if you're on, I think this is iOS 13 or 14, I'm not sure that you'll have, like, I like having little widgets so I can quickly uh, send stuff to my Roam graph, which we'll get to. And I have videos for all that stuff recorded in here as well. Um, and then there's caveats for people. Uh, international users that I, I think it's still subject to text message rates and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, they're all, there are alternatives. Hmm. And unfortunately, so that would also mean that if you don't have internet connection, the service won't be able to send them or receive them. So that's an hmm. important caveat. Uh, so basically what it, what it's doing is, okay, so you, you, you text a number, right? And then you just go, you, you could even do like a, a voice voice recording, like voice dictation, be like, hey, I want to capture this idea. And then you send it to this number and then it ends up in your room, correct? Yep. Awesome. So it kind of looks like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, some, and then there's a couple things I just want to mention is that like you should understand, I, I left a link to his privacy page, but like you guys should understand the implications of loading third-party scripts into the graphs and also sending and sending data messages through a third-party service. Uh, but that kind of applies to any Roam.js plugin, uh, which is what, kind of why Bo is so big on vetting and making sure that people that he's uh, recommending are trustworthy, which the guys here are amazing, Vlad and David. I mean, I will take a baseball bat to someone's head if, you know, don't mess with my peoples. Yeah, was, it's that so was that was a joke too. I'm just trying to like lighten the mood. Sorry, I'm, I'm just nervous. So I, I'm just gonna keep smiling nervously. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're crushing it, dude. This is amazing. All right, thank you. Yeah, it's so benefits like you don't. I, I mean, I'm sure everyone here has tried to has waited 15, 20 seconds for your graph to load on your mobile device, and it still doesn't. Hmm. It's still just not super smooth. So yeah, it, it also does some cool stuff like you can send and receive. I mean, it can you can send like a photo to to phone to Rome and it will show up as a photo in your graph. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll get to it below, but like you can configure your imported blocks to your liking, like what tag it uses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the benefits and overview. And I I mean I you I can dive into this if if everyone's cool with that. Yeah, let's uh -oh. yeah let's do it. All right. Um, yeah. So first step, uh, signing up for the service on their website. So you see that here. The you second step. Can you change step, your splash screen? 
he changed his splash screen, huh? Yeah, he, he cleaned oh. it up well. I, I think that was because of us. So basically, just so everyone knows, uh, so so me and Justin sort of like blindsided Scott. And we're like, dude, your website, well, let me say that again. I'll take full responsibility. I, I told him, dude, your website's hideous. I, and, I told him that if you're going to want, if you want people to use your service, you have to have, you want to have a site that portrays trust and like, it just, yes. it looked a little bit too co comical, I guess. But now I think comic, he's... comic Sans, a little 2003-ish. So yeah, it's, this it's is, a, this like, is beyond happy. aesthetic, yeah, beyond aesthetic, it's, it, it's definitely important to, if you're going to show this, use, if people are going to use your service and trust you with their data, you want your site to look like that, but hmm. I digress. So yeah, if it, I'm sure some people here have set up Rome.js scripts, but if not, this kind of, I don't need to necessarily go step by step through it because it provides instructions when you sign up. Hmm. And I also put some here. So it's like you're grabbing this code block that's in here, and then you're going to create a Rome.js page in your graph, and then you're going to nest that basically that script with your own. I blurred my key out, but you're going to have your own uh, little secret code or whatever, like your, yeah, yeah, Rome key, yeah. which I yeah. noticed uh, mentioned up here. And yeah, going back to the whole like understanding privacy, security implications that you are going to have to toggle this functionality to enable it. Um, all right. And then, yeah. So after you set it up, this is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't got to the cool part yet. Just wait. It, it gets better actually. Um, so yeah, you set it up in your graph and then once you've configured the Rome JS script and you've enabled it, it's going to automatically create this like Rome slash JS slash PTR phone to Rome page, which is uh, which allows you to configure a tag that gets appended to the end of every thing you import from phone to Rome, or you can have a parent block title. I believe that would nest, it would nest everything in phone to Rome under that. Uh, but yeah, you can play around with that here once, once you've enabled the script. Hmm. All right, so now, now we're kind of getting into the fun part. Uh, so you can, so essentially, like I said, it's just sending a text message. So you can create a phone to roam contact within your phone and you can kind of call it whatever you want, phone to roam, roam, whatever. And now you can text this Jarvis, number as you- You, you could call it Jarvis. Yeah, Jarvis, you can call it Jarvis if you want. Sorry. So like, you could text this number now, just like you text any of your friends. And this is kind of where the setup would stop if you're not interested in any of the other workflows. Like from here, you you have enough that you could just start uh, sending stuff to your Rome graph. Um, yeah, and then some caveats. Text messages come must come from the phone that you used to sign up with. And they're, like I said earlier, they're subject to carrier rates and prices. So now the now the fun. You get a new phone, is, huh? What if you get a new phone? Uh, as long as you carry your that number over, and, and I think even if you got a new number, you just sign up again with that number. And as long as you update the key, the the, the Rome key that we talked about earlier, oh. then then you should be able to send stuff from there. Thanks. So. Oh, this is uh, cool. Yeah, so basically, I'm not sure if anyone's played around with like the iOS shortcuts app, but I'm gonna like kind of dive into it lightly here. But so starting off, you kind of, you create a folder. I called my, you can have like a, you, you can call it Rome, you can call it Backtap, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, so yeah, you create this folder in the shortcuts app. And then we're going to go ahead and kind of demo the like. So what I did is I created like a phone to roam shortcut, a photo to roam shortcut, clipboard to roam, and then like a dictate to roam. I I use the phone to roam one the most, but they're they all have different kind of cool use cases. 
Um, and these all have links. So uh, they will link to the actual shortcuts that I created. It, I don't know why it doesn't load correctly here, but these, mm. these will uh, be loaded up for you. So like there's a phone to Rome one. Yeah. And then, yeah, so basically just showing so this is, this is great. So basically, if you click on that phone to roam, photo to roam, clipboard to roam, or any of the widgets there, it'll basically open up and you can download that widget to your phone because that has a specific sort of coding that will open this app, close this app, open, you know what I mean, give you this prompt. So it's just basically, Justin has done all the work for you. And all you have to do is download this shortcut to your own iPhone. And yeah, uh, I think I have some demos of it. But, but yeah, so there's and I think these are these are going to be widgets that show up here, mm -hmm. so that like when you're kind is, of is this put in the Rome Book Club uh, graph. It now? is. It is. It is on the Rome Book Club graph. If yeah. you look at uh, double open brackets phone to Rome demo. Thank you. Yep. So these are widgets. So um, they're going to show up up here. But there's also there's also a share menu. I'm not sure which people are. If you're not familiar, let me show. A, so I, I created two things. There's a share to Rome and then there's a quick capture to Rome. Share to Rome basically is like an option that when you share something to phone to Rome that you can add text to it. And then quick capture is more like if you want to just send something quickly to the graph without adding any input. So I have demos of both those. Let's see. So yeah, this is see here clicking share to Rome it's going to grab that link and then it pops up this thing so I could add additional text to it if I want to oh that's so cool so basically highlight so basically just for for us highlight the text of whatever you're using like say you're on a, on a, on, a, on an article highlight that text and then capture your first pass fleeting notes capture enough of that fleeting note and then text that over and then boom, you've got the source material, you've got the, the highlight, and then you have your fleeting notes. Yeah, and so you can say, see here, I, like I kind of showed how, like with like the, uh, the hood up or something like that, but like, so you're basically just, you're accepting anything from the share menu. Um, I think I should, yeah, so I saw how to get to the share menu. So I'll also demo like what quick capture looks like. So this one basically is the same thing, but you don't, you don't have any input. It's just like for quickly saving something. So you notice I'll scroll here and then quick capture to Rome. And then it will just like, it will just pop that up and then go away if it's successful. Okay, can mm -hmm. I just stop real quick? Um, just what does everyone think? Like thumbs up, thumbs down? Is your, is your mind blown right now? Isn't this really Fabulous. cool? Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, so people great. are clapping and- Like, and... like okay. straight out of your brain into your Rome graph. Yes, and people's minds are getting blown right now. So thank you, Scott Block, if you're going to watch this later. Um, and then uh, any other sort of quick things to touch upon here? I mean, I feel like you've nailed it. Yeah, like I guess I mean there, it's all in here, and I kind of walk people up. Like uh, there's some videos, and you can you can tag use the filters up here to jump mm -hmm. through like the actual media. But like I create like showing you how to like create a widget for set, like setting up phone to roam this is great and you could also just like you know have a keyboard shortcut where it'll like if you do fff it'll automatically change that to fleeting notes with the hashtag and so when you send it in from send a phone to roam then it'll end up in your graph with already the fleeting notes tag there if that makes sense mm -hmm. again there's just a lot of options i think this is amazing the Thank last, I guess, so oh yeah, go the ahead. last go thing ahead. I will say that's super, super cool, um, not this one, is uh, so there's this new feature I think that's called in in, in iOS for 13 or 14 that basically allows you to tap the back of your phone twice or mm -hmm. three times, and you can tie that to shortcuts. So this this thing kind of blew my mind. If, if Caramander's here, he he's the one who turned me on to it, but this is how you kind of, this is a walkthrough of how you set it up. Here for you, Justin. He's yep. here. And so I have mine set up. So like if I tap it twice or tap it three times, it's going to toggle the, the phone to roam shortcut. And that's, and this is kind of what it looks like. 
you can't see me tapping on the phone, but like I'm on the home screen. So I tap the back of the phone three times and then this pops up. Uh, wait, hold, uh, wait, ladies and gentlemen, is that frictionless? I think that's rather frictionless, okay? I, I just I feel like it is. I don't know. Yeah, as simple as it gets. Mm. This is all input, okay? This is how you get the information into Rome. This is awesome. Thank you, Justin. Justin. This is phenomenal, man. Justin, have you shown the two taps? How it, do you have the audio one set up where it can capture audio that you're speaking? Send it. I, I don't have it set up for my the, the two taps. Uh, that's like okay. I, have, I have a three tap for that one. But um, yeah, as you can see, that was I I, I uh, recorded that video last night, and then it showed up in my graph like this. And so the last thing I'll say is that yeah, I use the you can configure the um, what tag gets used when stuff gets imported. I like using inbox because kind of kind of like getting things done remnant. Um, and then I have cool, I can use like smart blocks to create queries, like when I do my end of day reviews, so I can have like query today and inbox and then any item that shows up in my inbox, I have a whole list of it so that I can and then kind of go through and process them. But it's equivalent of a fleeting note, kind of what we were just talking about. Listen, Justin, yeah. th this is awesome. Like, thank you for doing this. Like, look how much work he put into this. This is phenomenal. Again, this is going to be in the in, in the shared graph. And um, if people want to reach out to you, I have your Twitter. Can they just shoot you a DM if they have any questions? And, and they can also reach out to Scott Block, the creator of Phone to Rome. Um, people are giving you stanky face, ridiculousness, fr frictionlessness. So, I mean, this is it. You know, this is definitely frictionless input into Rome. And so thank you again, Justin. Let's just give him a hand, everyone. Like, that is awesome. And this is going to lead us into Mr. Vargas. Mr. Vargas is not here. I don't know where he is. Where'd he go? Where you at? Yep, we have, uh, we have Vlad go first. Uh, oh. him. I got there's, you. Uh, there's some evacuate going on in this office. And none of the okay. rooms have Wi-Fi. Perfect. Vlad. So that was input. Now I kind of want to talk about output and what you've done with Rome garden is like, if you, I don't want to hype it up. I'm going to let you take the floor. Vlad, take it away. Uh, all right. So uh, presumably you have done some awesome reading and you are ready to share your insights with the world. Um, and well, Rome does not allow you to do that um, well, that easily. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is to basically, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, allow you to do that in, well, uh, in a few clicks, basically. So, and the let me start sharing the screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, you might want to sit down. I didn't. I didn't give that warning when Justin was sharing, but. <laughs> okay. So here. Yes, we can um, see. Cool. Um, right. So the idea is that with um, a bit of setup, you can publish um, your notes in a format that is similar to this. Um, so. Probably some people would recognize the ND Matushek style like note. Um, so uh, yeah, um, you get uh, yeah notes, previews, backlinks, um, block references, block embeds, etc. Um, and uh, the nesting as well. You have a nesting there too of yes. the blocks. Yep, nesting. Um, oh nesting of the blocks so it can expand collapse and uh, yeah uh, that he, and, and you can um, yeah configure how it looks etc so let, let's look at how uh, one actually does uh, do the setup and uh, so basically what this is doing is well I, I'll let you keep going this is this is cool um, I 
Looking for him to load. Okay, so assuming you have installed the plugin into your room, you will have, um, like, if you go to Rome uh, slash garden page, you will have this publishing page. Uh, so there you can, like, en enter some details about how your site would look like, um, potentially, like, change how it looks, uh, choose what tags um, to uh, publish and or like if you want to publish everything and then basically you press a submit button and like magic happens um <clears throat> so, so, so yeah. you, you so, so you tag a page you tag any page on your personal roam graph yep and that will automatically publish it into yep. like a website Yep. Uh, so, like you, that you can loads, see that we have that loads as fast as a website, correct? Yeah, yeah. So you, you see uh, here, like make public uh, tag, right? So the, this is our marker, and we can go to make uh, public page, and here we have like a bunch of linked references, um, and so I have like a whole bunch of pages tagged with that tag, and so like any of those pages, oh, all of those pages would be would become public on my um from god and so um right yeah we, we can have like so we have the good interfaces have small surface area page and so you'll have the same page here uh good faces has small surface area and um yeah and we have here like uh, uh i guess reference to the or blocking bad from the clean code book uh, which this is like uh, uh, coming from. Uh, yeah, that's from Garden. Um, sure. <laughs> They're telling me to shut up. Quit interrupting them. Um, <laughs> so, so let me ask you this question. Right. Uh, or there's questions. Yes. Go ahead. I have a a, a, a Rome book on a uh, public page. It's not working because only the Rome people know how to navigate a Rome book. So if I send a friend who's not on Rome, he looks at it and he's lost. He doesn't know how to use the disclosure triangles, nothing, even the slight, nothing. So can I publish an entire book on Rome Garden? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, well, I, I suppose I mean, if it's large, it's gonna take a bit to like process, but uh no like yeah there's no inherent like limitations so it's got its internal links on the on the uh yeah so all, all these are internal links right so, so this is a the... table of contents and people just click each thing in the table of contents and they go to the chapter yep. whoa yeah so uh <laughs> i heard a whoa whoa that was <laughs> george in, in one of about the links that are on the site that you made public are they also public then immediately um sorry can you repeat that for example like your your uh, your page now the garden terrace you made it public with your hashtag make public but yep. does it mean immediately that all the links that you have on that site are also public uh, no, only the things that you make explicitly public and made so. So for the okay. things that, that you have like links to, but you did not make public, you'll get like an orphan page with like this header. So it tell, tells you, okay, this like this has a bunch of like back references to it. So we make a page for it to like uh, maintain the navigation fluency and like to collect the backlinks, etc. But we don't publish the actual content because you did not I choose to do ah, so. Okay. Thank and you. all of this is customizable, correct, with CSS? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there are like a few, uh, yeah, like a gardens that I like. Um, so here's one customization that looks different. I, I like this GIF for the orphan pages. Um, <laughs> uh, right. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so this looks like fairly different, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, like references style differently. Um, yeah, uh, uh, and I think uh, has like peculiar dark mode. Mm. Um, 
what else? Um, which one? Oh, so once they hit submit, how long does it take before the garden is visible with a refresh of the page? Um, so it depends on the size of the garden. So you, for like average size garden, it's like five to 10 minutes. Uh, for like Joel Chan size garden, which is, he, he publishes uh, like everything in his graph. And like the, this, this takes maybe um, uh, half an hour to hour to fully render sometimes. Um, like uh, it's, uh, it's not all rendering time. There, there is like a, some weird interaction with the hosting service that I'm yet to look at. So, but if, if your graph is really large, it, it may take a bit, um, but you know, like you, usually it would, it would be no longer than 10 minutes. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you don't have to leave your graph to have a WordPress blog anymore. And that's loads instantly like a website. And, you know, as for changing the page format, uh, you can, like all of this is customizable with CSS, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can change like, uh, I don't know, centering, how large it is, how, like what colors are there, um, et cetera. You can probably get rid of the end time navigation as well if you like, although that is a default. Um, um, yeah, so if you want to learn more, so there is like, uh, well, uh, there's of course the main like side page that talks to uh, your both features and like uh, how to set things up. And there is a meta garden that like, yeah, uh, and that has some uh, frequently asked questions and like uh, set up instructions for um, a plugin that I showed you. And mm -hmm. yeah, there's a video as well. Um, so yeah, there, there are, uh, well, the, the easiest way to use it is from um, within Room. So uh, as I uh, said, so if you have a plugin installed, you just then go to Room Garden page and like and enter a few fields uh, and press the submit button and it's going to filter everything locally so like only the things that are public are sent to are ever sent to room garden mm -hmm. uh, and like the whole thing is open source um, again like trust and privacy important considerations like uh, I would uh, feel nervous sending my data elsewhere so um, yeah yeah this is awesome and I, you know, there's a lot of people that have questions and I'm actually going to have them directed directly towards you, maybe through some sort of, uh, the DM through Twitter or email, just because there are some, there are some limitations and there are some things that are still being worked on. And I think the idea is what I wanted to, I wanted to plant the seed. Let's see what I did there. I wanted to plant the seed of what's possible of once you put the information in how to present this to the world with one click. Yep. Um, also, I have a promo code for uh, Run Book Club participants. Um, so I love you, Vlad. Uh, I love you, Vlad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when you sign up, it's um, C4 Garden. Um, you can apply that to get uh, like an additional month or two uh, uh, in Rom Garden. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please poke me. Uh, probably Twitter is the easiest. Uh, um, or yeah, uh, or here. I, I, mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, so the website is rome.garden. <laughs> Um, yep. I have, what's the promo code again? RBC4 Garden. Yep. And I sent um, it to Chatroom. Yes. And then that's a free month, I believe. Is that what you said? Yep. Awesome. And then if you want to reach out to Vlad, I have his, uh, when you click on, it says Vlad on the daily notes page for today, it'll go directly to his Twitter. And this is awesome. This is really cool. And l let me, let me finish with this. Vlad, w where do you see this going? in the next six to nine months, what would you like to see? Uh, I'd like to see more variety on like how the garden is structured for once. 
Um, I'd like to allow people to have like more control uh, with regard to access to the garden. So like uh, gating access to some parts of the garden. Mm -hmm. um, also like broader, like third party things, integrations. So um, like analytics, uh, payments, etc. So things like that um, are, yeah, the, the things that I've been uh, considering building hmm. i think this is awesome i think it's it's what this is is it's it's a glimmer at it's a you know we are on the frontier here and it's just like all that work that we're doing with all of our thinking if there's ways that we can have the world see it as well is vitally important and so thank you vlad seriously this is awesome and you know you're you're one of those people where it's like you're trustworthy, you're kind, and you're always there. And I feel like, yeah, in regards to paying dues, it's like you've been there since day one. And it's just, it's an honor to be your friend. And it's an honor to see what you're doing here. And um, thank you. Like, I didn't know that he was going to give us a free month. But thank you for doing that for RBC as well. And yeah, let's build some gardens, you know? We let the gardens bloom. Yeah. So... We have one person left and this person, this guy, ah, oh, Mr. Vargas, Mr. David Vargas. So let me give a little background. Yeah. Uh, let me give you a little background. So David Vargas. He's one of those people that you want on your, on your team. You know, he's one of those people where it's like, you know, like when you're playing like flag football or something and like, you know, I want Vargas, you know, it's just like that. And, and maybe there's a better analogy, but I, yeah, I just, I just, I don't understand how someone can solve problems so fast and like add extensions so fast and like solve, it's just crazy. And so Vargas, do you want to take over? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for the thanks for that introduction, Bo. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it was funny because I'm in a co-working space, but today is Sunday, so I guess they vacuum uh, on Sunday, so I have to push back to the end. But I think it's uh, somewhat fitting for me to go ahead because I, I want to talk about more uh, like a high level. So we just saw like two specific RoamJS extensions, um, and then I'm gonna I want to talk about RoamJS extensions more generally, and then have that lead into RoamJS itself. So I am going to share screen. Oh, we can hear you fine, by the way. Like, there's no background noise. It's oh yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah. The the uh, the the vacuuming has stopped. We're good now. <laughs> uh, cool. So I'm going to assume everyone can see the presentation I have. It um, says yeah, starting screen has started screen sharing. Uh, uh, but it's black. Ooh. Let's do this. Let's again? do. There we go. Cool. So did, you, wait, did, you, did you make a presentation? Uh, it's it's quick. I, I made this. Uh, while did, ago. You, what? did you? Did well, you really make? I, you guys, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, you guys are awesome. I gave this them like no notice, by the way. RBC, I gave them like no notice. And so it was just like, look at what they're doing. This is amazing. Please. This is, I'm actually, I'm actually cheating a little bit because I used this presentation elsewhere and just tweaked it a little bit for this one. But yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about this super cool feature that Rome implemented, which is called Rome slash JS. Um, I'm also going to assume, I know there's a, a wide range of experiences here from beginners to power users, but I'm going to assume uh, beginners at first. Um, so bear with me. Um, so before getting into, uh, the getting into the fancy stuff with extensions, uh, I think it's almost my responsibility to emphasize the following, which is that Rome is a great product without extensions. It is a phenomenal tool without any extensions. You do not need any extensions. You do not need to feel pressured to install extensions. Rome is like a phenomenal product without it. Uh, and so I always advise everyone to spend your first few months, maybe even like the first full year of using Rome just like focusing on the core features like daily notes and to-dos and links and everything that Bo is teaching you through RBC. Um, just, you know, really just get, get very intimate with the tool and start note, like develop your own processes. 
only after you feel very comfortable with your processes and only after you start observing inefficiencies with your processes and start seeing yourself doing manual stuff, then could you start, then would I recommend starting to consider uh, rough extensions. Um, this is, there are a lot of risks um, to keep in mind with RAM extensions. Um, every time you download one, uh, just like Justin mentioned, there's this little warning that comes up. Uh, you should think of it, um, you should almost think of downloading or installing an extension um, as somebody like literally sitting in your, like the author of that extension sitting on your Rome graph. Like that's how much power they have. Um, and that code has access to all of your data. Um, this this so, is why it's so important to like know who who it is. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, so. And it's also, in my opinion, very important for all this core code to be open source, so that if you don't know anything about code, you can reach out to um, you can reach out to me uh, or like any other Rome developer to vet whatever you want to install for you, so that we can give you the green light and uh, so that you can trust what's actually being installed in your graph. The other risk is that Rome itself. It's still in active development, so there are sometimes that Rome will push an update and it'll break some like one of these extensions, and then uh, we'll have to like you know fix it. Um, and then the other risk is that if you if you install too many Rome extensions, it could slow down your Rome. Um, so think of extension like you know your iPhone. You wouldn't download, you wouldn't install all the apps in the App Store in your phone in the same way. Uh, don't like download all the extensions <laughs> from Rome JS or from elsewhere. Just only focus on the ones that will actually bring value to you. Uh, community support, uh, you can reach out to any of us on Twitter. Um, and then on Slack, I have all channels muted except for these three. Um, so I would recommend uh, if you're looking for help, uh, these are the best way, like these are the ones I check most often uh, to, to respond to. Uh, yeah, where to start? Like I said, identify what your problems are, identify like the patterns in your processes um, and then and then we'll then begin searching for your solutions. Um, most uh, extensions could be found here at romejs.com slash extensions, which we'll visit in a little bit. Um, okay, so what is an extension? So you can think of them similar to like Chrome extensions, like I have a few up here, um, but it's just for Rome. They can be as simple as this like little like sort icon, and they can be as complicated as the presentation that I'm giving you now. So this presentation somewhat some people seem to have spoiled the surprise <laughs> in the chat, but this presentation right now is a Rome extension. All this of these awesome. are blocks. All of these are blocks um, that uh, these are all, all of these are blocks like within my Rome graph that I'm uh, using to share. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to install too much because I just went over this, but you like basically create this Rome slash JS block, write some throw on some back ticks and then put it into code. Uh, Rome.js has another way available that should make it a little bit easier. Um, and then to use it, just click on this button. Sometimes you'll need to refresh um, your browser. Uh, in, like a refresh is basically like a reinstalling. So if there's any, anything going wonky, try refreshing first before uh, reaching out to us. Um, I'm gonna pause for a bit uh, before continuing to see if anyone has any questions. We had some in the chat. How do you how do you delete a a, a, a a JS extension? You would delete the delete the block and then refresh. So uh, the extensions are usually installed with this like you know this Rome slash JS block and then there's like code under it. Hmm. Um, yeah. So to delete an extension, you either like press the button again so it goes back to red, or you can just delete the block entirely and then refresh. The important part is is to refresh because when you refresh Rome. Every time you load Rome, it's like a blank slate, and then the extensions get added on top. Mm -hmm. um, so if you delete the block, uh, you'll get the fresh slate, and then all the blocks except for the one that you just deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Let's jump in. If there's no other question, then let me jump into Rome.js. Um, cool. Yeah. So RomeJS.com, there's um, an extensions page where you, where you can find like all the different extensions we have live right now. Um, and we also have a few in development uh, pretty soon. The two that you just saw, Phone to, uh, to Rome Garden, will be distributed uh, through RomeJS as well. Um, and then there's all sorts of different integrations, tools. Uh, yeah, integrations and tools that you can use 
Um, they're all free to use, free to install. There are a couple of paid ones in services, but most of all these, uh, all, all the ones on this page are free to use. Um, let's visit Rome 42, which is probably the most popular one made by uh, Rome Hacker. Uh, God bless that man. Uh, yeah, so to install an extension, all you have to do, so you could do the manual way, which uh, Justin demoed um, and uh, I just showed before, um, but also there's usually on all the extensions, there's this copy extension button that you can just click. Um, and then in your graph, you can just create a new line and just paste it in and then click the button and that will load the extension um, in your graph. Okay, can you make it more difficult? Hold on, this is too, I need more friction, man. I, I need it more difficult. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there, we're soon, soon working on a way, uh, hopefully to just be able to install it from Rome. So that mm. will come in the next, hopefully month or so, but we'll see. Mm. Um, and yeah, and so uh, Bo gave me a label of doing in and out. So I have two different extensions I want to demo once one is focusing on input, one's focusing on output. Um, and so I know uh, Instapaper is like a popular app. I used to use it. Um, but one thing I realized is that I found it really annoying to like use another app to like eventually get it to Rome. Like, why can't I just have it uh, download into Rome directly? So there's an article extension, which you can find here. Um, and what it does is a, when you are on a link, you hit Alt Shift I, which I did a couple seconds ago, and it will just import the entire article um, into Rome. And then you can, you know, you can highlight stuff and you can like write notes on under it. Like this is so inspirational. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even like delete stuff that you find is a cruft. Uh, and yeah, and so this is like an example of a like in, like an input type of extension. Um, I saw somebody else earlier, like a question. Otter. Oh yeah, go for it. Um, when you do that, I, I, I like the import article as a whole, but uh, is there a way you lo don't lose track of what is the source versus what is yours? Like the literature note versus the reference note because of attribution um, as you build things. Yeah, so that's I think that's a that's going to be custom based on how you organize uh, your Zettelkast and how you organize your notes. Um, the extension will simply um, import everything in like as children under one block. So at, at the very least, you'll have everything collapsed into this block, and then from there you can uh, you know move the block, tag the blocks, whatever, however you want to. Um, oh, give it the proper proper attribution, but it'll at the very least all import under the link, um, so that's all contained to one, uh, you know, block space. Are you, you on romejs.com right now? Yeah, Rome, yeah, romejs.com is uh, is the platform that we're. I'm not right seeing now. exactly that page. Oh, sorry. This is romejs.com slash extensions. So you can. Oh, so gotcha. This is this is the home page. Thanks. Uh, and then you can hit getting started and it'll bring up all the extensions. Gotcha, thanks. Um, right, look, at, look, at, look at how, like, look at all the different, please, I'll, I'll let you keep going. Uh, yeah, so uh, I saw earlier people talking about um, an otter extension. Um, let's go to, um, I saw people talk like, ooh, that's not good. Um, people talk about like an auto extension. So that's another example of an import uh, input or a ring is another example of input. There's uh, Google Calendar is one that I, uh, I personally use to import my day, like import the events of my day. There's a, yeah. So there's all, all sorts of different ones for like input. Mm. Um, an example of an output extension is the Twitter one. So when you install the Twitter extension, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll have to log in to Twitter on Rome Don't JS. tell everybody about it. It's a secret weapon. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm about to tell everybody. <laughs> uh, the jig is up. <laughs> yeah. So there's a Rome slash JS slash Twitter page. Uh, when you go to that page, um, you'll want to uh, log in um, with your Twitter account. Um, I click can you this zoom in a little, David? Can you zoom in to like the size of the text a little just so we can see? Did we improve? Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. 
Cool. So yeah, uh, there's a bunch of configura configuration options, but the most important one is just logging in. Like you first have to like be logged in as Twitter so that Rome knows, or that, so that Rome JS knows how to tweet for you. Um, and then once you are logged in, um, you create a block that says, uh, or a button that says tweet. Um, and then nested under it, you can start writing down, um, hello world. Ooh, the zooming messed this up a little. Yeah. And while you're doing that, can I say you can do it retroactively? You may have some great stuff in Rome. Just put the Twitter thing above it, nest the other ones below. Bang, you have a, a tweet thread. Hmm. All thread. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, all you have to do is put the, the Twitter button on top of whatever block um, you want to send. Um, yeah. And then I'll demo in a bit uh, after Rome loads. Uh, actually sending the tweet um, and like there's a like as you're typing out the like typing out your tweet there's a live counter that should be floated to the right I don't know why it was uh, superimposed over my block just now but uh, yeah like it'll start counting uh, the characters like you know Twitter does um, and then uh, once you know the tweet is ready to go you can click yeah there we go you have to be typing in it Ooh. Okay, I'll uh, look into that later. Um, and then how would you send the tweet? Yeah, I'm getting that one second. Hello okay. world. From RBC, this is four, right? RBC four, yes. Um, and then you click this little Twitter bird um, and then wow. you can uh, send tweet. And you, can, and you can schedule it too. So scheduling is actually um, a paid feature. Um, you'll have to, uh, and then it, like I have a configuration option such that it will like import um, the tweet after uh, it'll like, it'll like put the link there after it sends it. Uh, yeah, so scheduling tweet is actually a paid feature because that requires um, like backend resources that Rome.js manages um, in order to do. Uh, if anyone has any questions on that, you can you know follow up with me either on Twitter or Slack or wherever, and I can help you get started. Oh, uh, we're also offering like the first three months free for anyone who does schedule a call with, uh, with us uh, to like help onboard and give feedback. Um, but yeah, so like you type out the tweet, you just hit send, and then um, let me go to my spam RomeJS account. And if I hit refresh, um, you'll see that the tweet um, was sent um, do, 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 right here. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone actually follow this account. I do a bunch of testing on this account and it'll be just mostly spam and garbage on your Twitter feed. So don't actually follow this account. But um, here's the, the tweet that we, uh, we sent from, uh, uh, sent from uh, straight from Rome. You can also do like Twitter thread. So if you do like a whole block, um, it'll, Like if you keep doing a bunch of, uh, you have like a bunch of blocks and it'll send the whole thing as a Twitter thread. Um, you can like reply. If you like nest things under an existing tweet, you can like reply <laughs> to a tweet. Hmm. Um, and okay. then, yeah, it's a, and then it'll say uh, sent from Rome.js because you're using um, the Rome.js app to um, actually send it. Hmm. Now, if Bo uses this, he'll be dangerous. Well, I, I, you know, to me, it's just, just blown away, you know, just really, this is so invaluable. And uh, David, do you, is there anything else, Vargas? Yeah, no, so that was, that was it. The, the main takeaways I want to impart is that there are um, a ton of cool tools out there, not just uh, not selfishly, not just for me, but like also, you know, what uh, Vlad showed off and what Justin showed up from Scott and there's much more. Um, and one of the common like traps I see people fall into is feeling overwhelmed by it or feeling like they need to learn JavaScript in order to learn Rome. And I, and I just want to say like, oh, no, all that is BS. Um, feel free to like reach out to us anytime you have questions about what you want to install and what uh, you're thinking about using. Um, and also don't feel pressured to use anything because like the most important point I think is this first one, which is that Rome is a incredible product uh, without extensions. Um, and so, 
Yeah, go for it. You have a uh, tutorial, or can we get a private tutorial that we pay for? Uh, uh, for smart blocks, I'm very eager to use smart blocks in a very detailed way. Yeah, there's uh, Rome Hacker, uh, who is a beast, um, included. I think he has. I'm, I'm still getting used to all the Rome 42 um, resources because the handoff. He handed it off to Rome JS about a month ago. But I know he here in this Rome 42 menu, he has all sorts of great tutorials um, about uh, not just from 42, but he also there, there should be, I expect some stuff on smart blocks um, throughout here. Um, and then also on the Rome 42 page itself. Do, 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 do. Um, I, I expect that there are um, a bunch of uh, resources here on like slash from 42 slash smart blocks. Um, and then if that's still not enough, then yeah, you can definitely reach out to RomeJS and we can set up uh, a session uh, either with myself or if I think there are, there are other members in the community who can explain smart box uh, better than I can, then we can like set something up to like help you uh, hey, get started. David, I want to jump into, so they have a GitHub smart box repo with like a bunch of people. It's, I think there's like over 200 submitted like community smart box in there. I can the link in the chat that helps oh yeah here there's a there's a great video series uh, by RJ, RJ. Hester, RJ. Um, where he goes through he go like goes through all like all the ins and outs of smart blocks and getting started uh, so I would definitely recommend starting there um, and then if there's still like hiccups that you're facing or like still like some concepts that feel foreign to you um, then yeah you can feel free to reach out there's a little little chat bubble down here that you can send to us. Um, I try to respond to every one of them and we can uh, set up something after that. Thank you. Vargas, I mean, love you, dude. I love you, man. This is amazing. Just, you know, and... Um, it just occurred to me, uh, I want social proof for MGS extensions. So uh, I want for people to be able to upload things and then go and designate, like what, uh, choosing what extensions I should use to the communal row mind and like see what, what, what is the best. So anyway, I have a request to be able to upload extensions. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, upvote, downvote. Yeah, I, I'm still thinking through about like, um, a sort of like either star system or upvote downvote or comments or like something like yeah I, like the more i work on RomeJS, the more i want to get it looking closer and closer to like the google play store or like an app store or something like that um and yeah that's like a huge feature that would need to be implemented in order to get to that um in order to get to that point listen let's just give everyone a round of applause justin david vargas vlad you guys are amazing just, you know, this, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest takeaway I hope that everyone's getting is that, you know, this is a flourishing community, but more than that, just the, you know, I don't know where else you can just literally DM someone and you get the answers like that, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of people building and I think it's just a matter of seeing what you can do with the work that you're doing inside of Rome. And I think Vargas hit the nail on the head. It's when the need, when the necessity arises for that to handle the complexity, then it's there. And it's just, you know, so thank you again to everybody. And um, so now all that being said, I kind of want to just open it up to open discussion. I mean, you have the the extension makers here. If you want to ask questions on that, if you want to talk about, um, you know, the the progress of getting started with your own Zettelkasten, whatever that looks like, what this past week felt like, breakthroughs, questions, concerns, but really just, I, I want to just leave it open. And if you want to just unmute yourself, uh, if I have to facilitate, I will. But if you want to just unmute, unmute yourself, and again, let's follow how we've been doing it from the beginning. It's like, you know, we are a representation of this community. So, you know, when, you know, do make sure that people that haven't spoken up have that opportunity as well. So it's open. Man, you just showed us what the meaning of life is. How do I ask a question? I can barely think now, seriously. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> I, I, I had 
a sort of meta question. Um, I love Chrome extensions because I'm like, holy shit, I can decide how to engage with software on my terms. What, what, what's unique about Rome that allows it to have so many extensions? Or maybe the other way to phrase that question is like, why does more stuff not have extensions? Um, wow, there's, there's a lot to that question actually. Um, why doesn't more, more stuff have extensions? Rome is actually taking a huge risk by um, opening it up like this and like basically like open the gate. They're, they're basically opening the gates to their app, <coughs> excuse me, and saying, hey guys, just like build whatever you want on top of our app. Uh, which is like a huge risk for a company to take because like, like I said, like me as an extension developer, once you install my extension, I have access to all of your data, right? And I can do like, if, if you didn't know what the code looked like, I could write code that says delete block loop for 3000 times and just like destroy all your stuff. Or like I could download all your data, like hold it for ransom. And then like, yeah, there's like this, there's legitimately scary stuff that people can do if you if you're not careful, which is why I, like I want to like make those risks uh, very much apparent, and very much upfront, um, and also stress that like all all the extension developers here uh, have their code open source, and I would be very skeptical of any like any of in, installing anything that's not any installing anything to your own graph graph that isn't open source or is embedded by uh, somebody uh, that's on here today or any of the other prominent uh, Rome developers in the community. And I think that's important too, because it's, it's, I see that fear and I go, I'm going to make sure that I jump on, like I've jumped on calls with all of them, all three of them, multiple, like how, how many times, you know what I mean? And it's just like, and then I also make sure that I wait to go recommend anybody. Cause I want to make sure that they, you know, they are proven and they have a track record, but again, there is that risk. And I think, you know, they, Vargas is exactly right. It's, you have to understand that that's what you're doing anytime you add a Rome JS extension. Are there are there any <clears throat> is there any work being done by any of the developers to integrate Rome and GPT three? Oh, George! Oh, George! <laughs> um, what's the what's that mean? I'll, I'll say coming soon. Really. Oh my God! Uh, I, this, uh, yeah, let's just let's just let's let's hold on that question. <laughs> you want a beta tester? I'm I'm raising my hand, <laughs> and I've got access to GPT three. So, oh wow, yeah, <laughs> well, stay stay tuned. <laughs> oh, wow. oh man, that's if you so don't... exciting! You're, we're gonna take over the world. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh, that's man. also kind of a scary thought. If you don't mind me, <laughs> isn't it? Actually, on, on that thought, I, I'm, uh, I'm curious because in my mind, uh, what Bo is doing is teaching us to basically have a minimal infrastructure do it. And then what you guys are doing are creating tools to help us synthesize and amplify the thought that we have in my mind, right? So I'm curious, and from my perspective, Rome is essentially our second brain. We're externalizing manually right now to do it. So I'm very, very curious to know sort of the forward looking possibilities with GPT-3 or whatever other things as a way to perhaps do auto suggestions for us when we do relevant notes as, a, as to do the shallow uh, connections. And so that we can, our, we are freed up to do more of the deep relevant notes type things. I mean, anyways, just, I'm curious to know from the tool developers, what are your sort of forward looking thoughts or intentions in, in terms of the possibilities? Uh, yeah. So, uh, to speak like honestly like I don't so I haven't played around with GPT-3 myself yet um, nor uh, but uh, like my, my I, I basically what I'm teasing at is that I have a project or I'm working with a client right now um, and he's looking to have a GPT-3 integration with his uh, through like his project and then I'm hoping to take that and abstract it out until I start playing around with GPT-3 itself, I'm not really entirely sure like where um, that development will be going. Um, but you can imagine like any, you, you'd imagine like GPT-3 being like this black box, you can like send like whatever inputs you want and then grab the output to do, like, to do whatever. So there could be like all sorts of, there'd be all sorts of apps that built on top of this interface. Um, as someone who has played around with it right now, I can't quite tell you like, exactly where I think this will go. I just know it's, it's possible. Wow. 
Hey, this is Alan. I, I just had a, a quick question. So, I mean, where do you see like the development of Rome kind of going in the future? And I guess what I'm getting at is that, you know, you have Azure that has like machine learning services built in. I mean, I kind of deal with some of that stuff, like, you know, in, in my day-to-day -day job, but do you see it getting to that type of point where you have these plugins that can kind of call data and start pulling things back for me based on what it, what it thinks I'm looking for? I'm just curious, like, what do you see future-wise with how open Rome is today about giving people access kind of to the data to build the type of things that you're doing? Yeah, uh, the best way I can describe this is that up to this point, like uh, most most apps are built uh, on top of like, like table schemas and on, uh, like the data layer is in like a table way and Rome is uh, one of the first ones where like the data manages a the data management is a accessible for users and b the management is in a, in a network instead of like a schema uh, instead of a table schema way which allows you to make all sorts of different applications that like are more you know like that map just more closely to like how we think and how we interact with the world and like uh make it easier to like make these like dependency graph of services um and so uh one of the one of the most exciting things I, i've seen like rome tweet over the last like you know, uh, month or so was that like our goal, their goal is to like create a million jobs, not a million employees. Um, and so in line with that, I can see like all sorts of businesses, like even verticalizing into like healthcare law, uh, you know, all these other, um, industries that are very like heavy on data. That's like all connected, but they're like currently siloed, um, and not, um, very well connected or very well usable or like, and their dependency graphs are just very split right now. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping to see is like lots of apps built, like using Rome as the data layer and building all sorts of tools and UIs on top of it for those services. Michael. David. Or uh, yeah, I have a question for Vladislav for the Rome garden. Uh, if I have some LaTeX formulae in my Rome blocks, uh, do they pass over in the, to the Rome gardens? and in the rendered form or what happens to them? Uh, yes, later is supported. Um, you can see, uh, so I have uh, this beautiful garden Lauren Ipsum page, which gives you an idea of what things are supported and which are not. Um, so let me share a link to that in the chat. So LaTeX is supported um, also like, um, uh, yeah, you can uh, embed like arbitrary HTML as well, which allows you to work around some things. So, but and allows you to do th things like embed forms um, or some such. Um, things that are not currently supported is, uh, and that I'm like looking to build uh, is queries and tables. So, like these kind of um, rooms. Um, detailed concept. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Hey, David. It's uh, Michael Walsh. Um, could you talk a little bit about your queue? Um, the fact that people can actually ask for a new feature and, and, uh, and uh, put some money on the table and, and possibly get in line uh, for you to do something that doesn't exist today. And I'm, I'm, I'm pointing this out because I did this and uh, happy to see that uh, uh, my request, uh, my wish was fulfilled for a very small amount of money. And now I can do something I couldn't do before. Uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, you bringing that up. Uh, so RumGS um, has a page called the queue. Um, and on it, you can see all the projects um, that we plan to implement in the next couple, uh, in the coming months. Um, and, you know, if you see something you like, you can feel, you can sponsor it or commit, uh, commit to sponsoring it, uh, which will like move it up in the queue. Uh, you don't actually get charged until the work is complete. Uh, and so once the, the feature is released and then all the, like the sponsorship commitments will, uh, will be charged. Outside of the queue, um, I also, offer like uh, more individualized freelancing. So if you have like a very specific project um, that uh, you think would be hard to like make it generalized for the community um, or like just any other like custom, yeah, like custom things to be built, you can reach out and we can organize a 
like freelance uh, engagement uh, to you know outline what work needs, what work needs to be done. That will usually follow like a milestone type compensation model uh, where I'll, I'll break up you know your project into like all these chunks, charge per chunk instead of per hour, um, and then we can then we'll like release it to the community and uh, let everyone know like what we've created together. Um, and you'll you'll probably see some other people like Zach Phillips um, released. Uh, something with like the YouTube player and timestamps uh, a couple of days ago. Um, Matt McGann really something uh, about context and having parent blocks and the parent tags and page tags render like their context. Um, each of those were uh, freelance engagements where they reached out to me and we coordinated uh, on, you know, set a, pro a project, broke it up into tasks and uh, uh, decided on a compensation model according uh, to that. Uh, so yeah, like because because all this like all the extensions are free and open source, uh, but this is like my full time job. This is like how I'm building uh, building the brand and our business to like uh, make sure that I'm able Good to luck. do this long term. Good luck. Can you mention the the random functions? I, I I'm sorry I don't remember whose is whose, but I use I'm feeling lucky. I use daily serendipity, and I use random blocks. Uh, all of which are enormously useful for pulling out literally random blocks. Uh, and uh, people here, might, as their graphs grow, grow, they might find it very useful creati creatively. Yeah, serendipity is from JS. Uh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling lucky. I think it's Eric Newhart. Um, Who's amazing. I'm, Eric's awesome too. Yeah, Eric's a great guy. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm like 90% sure that's, that's Eric Newhart who made, I'm feeling lucky. Who's also a developer. You can definitely trust, um, to enter your graph and then random block. I think is, are you referring to the, the, the smart block? Is that, yeah, I think I think smart there's, there's a random function in smart blocks. Which yeah. I so yeah. So that's smart blocks, which is Rome 42, which is now, uh, you know, used to be from hacker and now it's from JS. Yeah. Really? Awesome. <laughs> Everything in my brain feels like a random block. Yeah. I, can't re I can't retweet that harder. Yes. <laughs> so, so let's spend the next 15 minutes here uh, just to close out the meeting. And uh, just in regards to Zettel, how is, how, how is everyone doing? Are you ready? Are you ready to start building out your own Zettel, Kasten? Have you already? What's stopping you if you haven't? So uh, this is Mike, San Francisco. Um, yes. I've begun. I have two permanent notes in my, uh, in my, in my personal Zettel. Um, honestly, the last week for me wasn't super, super productive in terms of additions to the Zettel, but I thought deeply, in fact, this was my second permanent note, permanent note was completing this thought on who am I to be someone who thinks that they have a right to add something to the public discourse, essentially like what's, what is the value of my thought and, and where do I get off trying to say and do things? And, uh, and so the completion of the note, it actually was sparked by David Perel's tweet, where you, I'll paraphrase, basically the most profound people, the seemingly most original people have the most obscure sources. And I had the thought, what could be more obscure of a source than ourselves? Because like, this is, this is the one place that literally nobody can access except for us. And, and so I worked through the whole thing thinking about what does this mean and what am I supposed to do with it? And basically I came up with the fact that fundamentally, if I take the opposite position, I have nothing interesting to say, no value to contribute. What, is, what does that mean? And could I possibly believe in that position? Because if I believe in it, then what the hell am I even doing here? So then I had to assume the positive stance on the issue, which is that I do have something to say and I do have something to share. So I think this is the fuel that I need to really dive into this and believe in myself and my ability to do it. You know, I think, I think that's why it takes 42 days. That's why it's a six week thing. Because I don't, I don't like, I, I, like Mike, like, or, or even the group, it's like, it's not very difficult to actually like grok. Oh, it's just, three things and then you put that over here and you drag that over here. It's not, that's not the hard part. The hard part is allowing you to find a community where you can all start going, I have a voice. 
Absolutely. And this group has been immensely helpful in that regard. It's not over. I sure hope not. Mm-hmm. I hope this is a beginning, not an end. Mm-hmm. There's an alumni group. Um, tomorrow, uh, Next week, we'll do the debriefing. There's an alumni group. Um, and, you know, we're everywhere, you know, and Rome is only getting bigger. And it's just, you all are frontiers people. You're on the frontier. Hey, Mike, I mean, just like person to person, you've said so many good things that I've taken notes about in my personal graph. So if you start to question yourself and what you're (laughs) capable of, you and I will do a Zoom session and I will show you all the notes that you have made that I have applied in my life, right? So I think you're, you're more than on the right track there. And the fact that you're I, even I can't be the it. first one to cry in a session, okay? Yeah. No, I, mean, but I can't be the first one. Someone the fact, has, that, you're even, come on. The fact that you're even questioning it makes you a humble person, which means that I made the right choice in making the notes about you in my personal graph that I made. Mm. So true. Mm. Thank yeah, you. I think I think Mike starting it off that way is is exactly right because we're all struggling with with the value of our own thoughts. And I know for me, I've, I've got two in the shared graph. I've got one on my personal graph. And the, the, the thing that I was up against every time was, is this part of what I want to be part of the way I think forever? But then I come around, and this is what you're saying, but why it takes 42 days is because we're, we're making the switch. The thought I'm having now is part of the conversation that I'm having and the partner that I want to be relating to uh, going forward. So what I'm having right now is valid and important and it's the only real thing I can say right now. And and all the emotional writing we did early on helped build that, that, that I'm starting to trust that. And so it's it's really exciting when I actually get to doing the work that I'm, I'm doing it. I'm showing up as me. This is art. This is making things. This is, you know, yeah. Um, and, and that I get to respond to the last thing I said. It, it's, it's powerful stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm lit on fire by, by what we just heard all the guys share about, you know, what this could be in business and the world. And, you know, but it starts with this core of, of me showing up as a person and writing from my heart in response to the things I'm reading and connecting. So it's, I never have a conclusion when I start talking on here. I just have to stop at some point, but I guess that's all the nested. And then I get to make a summary. And, oh, yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks for letting me share. David, that's awesome. I, mean, I think we're all, we're all right there, you know? You know, I think that's, uh, I think that goes for all of us, you know, this, uh, that, that's what I found so, so great about uh, the introduction of Zenko, where, where he spoke about, you know, all the people, intelligent students who have this imposter syndrome. And, uh, and, mm-hmm. and I think we do all have the, have a variant of this one. And we all keep this with us. And, and it's, it's so great to, to share here and, and uh, to, to build ourselves up. And um, I, I, I mean, the chat room is, is, is the best place of this graph for me because I, I, I was able to meet all of you guys there. We had so many, so many fun and, and crazy and weird uh, chats there and, and it's such an awesome thing. So, and um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the last permanent notes I, I wrote down for in my personal uh, graph, um, by the way, using, using the fantastic auto integration, uh, <laughs> <My favorite. laughs> that, that, that was the one I published the, the last of the graph was was uh, purely done with order um, so it's it's so great to to be able to to use this uh, form here and I, I have never had so much fun uh, sharing so much of me uh, <laughs> which is a crazy uh, and scary part but uh, thanks for all this guys you're awesome by the way, Bo, uh, you mentioned in some of the videos that you don't want to see us running in the shared graph. You just said we should go away. Do you want us to come back? <laughs> uh, no, I want you to build your Zettel casting. You have to hit critical yeah. mass. The the only like you have all of this is rocket launchers, so you can go in your space shuttle. The rocket launchers are going to fall off, 
and it's now you in space towards critical mass. That's the most important thing because that's when everything like really crystallizes for you because you just like what David was talking about, what, what Mike was talking about. It's like, that's it. It's you get to see you, you know? And so that's what this whole push is. And, and so yes, the shared graph is an artifact. Yes. And it's always going to be there. And as we, as you all transition into the RBC4 alumni group and, and we have a shared graph, I'll have Bardia give me a shared graph and we can write in there. But, mm -hmm. or actually, you know, you'd go into the RBC uh, alumni shared graph, which is closed, right? It's, it's just as intimate as, as we have it here. And well, they're waiting for you, by the way. They're all, like la yesterday we had a meeting Friday and it was just where we basically, we've got it all ready for you. You know, we've got ideas of how to integrate, you know, RBC three and RBC four together. And yeah, it's exciting. And everyone's there talking the same language. Everyone's there going for critical mass accountability partners, you know, frustrations. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm succeeding with. It's all right there. And so, yes. Uh, Michael's got his hand up. I think CK had his hand up and you guys just jump in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just made one, one single permanent note in the shared graph, not yet in my own. And what I already feel is that I feel stronger when I am not alone, when I know that I'm not talking to myself. And um, so not being alone was a huge experience for me. And so I really will miss this when, when I start to do my own saddle cast. And so I am looking forward to having something being transported over to some kind of alumni group so but just why why i haven't started to do it on in my own graph yet yeah but something that you said uh to me last week has been ringing in my head you had said in passing i can't force anyone to live a deeper life you know they're gonna feel however they want to feel they want to go as deep or as shallow as they want to and that was like a gut punch. It's so annoying. It's, <laughs> it's tough love, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it's exactly what I needed. And then, and so, and then when I show you my work, you're like shallow, 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 shallow. I'm like, God damn it, Bo. <laughs> but it's perfect. So what I wanted to share is, and from that space, I went deeper and I had some epiphanies. One is if the question I've been contemplating is how do I go deeper? Well, ZK Rome is the way to go deeper. Mm. And, and another thing is, how do I become more fierce in the way that I share my voice, my thoughts? A place to start is to go deep. And mm. from the place, originally, when I first started looking at ZK Rome, I, I, I thought of it as a very faithful robot that just keeps all of my best ideas. And then the more I do it, the more I realize like it's actually a faithful and compassionate sparring partner mm -hmm. that continues to push me to be even more raw, even more honest and authentic with what is it that I'm trying to say and articulate and then, and then what is my truth and the essence of what I'm trying to articulate. So anyway, I just wanted to share that to the rest of the group that um, um, thank you for the work that you do and especially you, Bo. My pleasure. You know, that's a clear delineation, by the way. That's a clear delineation from the analog Zettelkasten and even digital Zettelkastens before Rome. Because they're not doing they're not doing the the induced forced concentration in the fleeting note abstractions and the literature note abstractions. And so it's it's so that's the only thing that they can say they go, I'm out of focus. Okay, there we go. That's the only thing that they can say of that's different, but it's, it's new. It's, it's the evolution of the Zettelkasten. It's the note-taking system. It's a simple note-taking system for networked thought layered on top with the simple note-taking tool for networked thought. And because we have both of those together now, that's the biggest difference. It allows you to go deep and then it also doesn't forget. And so that's why a lot of people that have 
3,000, 15,000 note Zettelkastens, like a physical slip box, they don't really understand what this, wow, depth part of it. And it's just something to consider because is it is that a traditional Zettelkasten? No, because the traditional Zettelkasten has one word fleeting notes. Joshua. Yeah. So uh, the whole fleeting note thing, uh, personally, I find that the more time I spend in the fleeting note, that, that phase, that is more of the notes capturing me. So instead of this being this process where I'm out hunting and consuming things and bringing them in for my own personal use, when I go to that fleeting note and I bring all of the children blocks back to you know siblings or parents or whatever crazy relationship you want to talk about, I always think, like, son of a gun, is this really worth it? And maybe it's just me. But, you know, if I have a bunch on there, say 20, but then once I start banging them out and I get to the bottom and it's that moment where you're like, yeah, okay, so this is why it rings true with me. You know, this is this is the me inside of the voice that I want to capture. This is the me that I want to talk to in two or three months. Uh, so I feel, again, just me. Uh, the fleeting notes and the fact that you spend so much time in the fleeting notes, that's what gives your dish all that flavor. I mean, anybody can just make a dish, you know, blue box or whatever's out there. But, you know, the chef that sits down with all of these different ingredients that they've tried and, and twisted and whatnot, that's how they really discover what, uh, what they can do, what they're capable of. So the fleeting notes for me, that's where it's at. And I had something I wanted to pass on to CK about the whole shallow thing. Uh, this kind of, I was talking to my son about it. Um, like when you're in that pool, we've all been in like the kiddie pool, you know, and it's typically, it's a graduated pool. You kind of slowly go down and you see the kids, they're kind of on the edge. They're like, Oh my goodness. And you can tell when they're getting there because you know, the water is creeping up higher and higher and higher and higher. And then there's that moment where you see them let go. And then they're just gone. Uh, I think once you catch that moment, uh, both, I guess, you know, literally and figuratively, you may be on to bigger and better things. So that's it. I had a quote I was going to share, but I don't want to take up any more of your precious time. I want to hear the quote. Okay, I'll share it. Uh, I'm not a big, it's not my quote, by the way. I think it is. Let me find it here. And it, it's fitting. It says, by replacing fear of the unknown with curiosity, we open ourselves up to the infinite stream of possibility. We can let fear rule our lives, or we can become childlike with curiosity, pushing our boundaries, leaping out of our comfort zones, and accepting what life puts before us. I think it's Alan Watts, if you're, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. But I thought it was a fitting, fitting quote. Good one. Thank you. And I'll just throw this out there, CK. People who talk in front of a group of over 70 people about thinking that maybe they're coming from a place of shallowness aren't shallow. That takes a lot of guts to do that. So pat yourself on the back because you mentioned that and faced it in front of everybody. You're not shallow, not by any stretch of the imagination. Like, have you seen his podcast? Like, come on. It's amazing. Yeah, you got to throw the link up there, CK. Throw it up. Throw it up. Come on. Let the world know your name. <laughs> um, how about how about um, from people that you know are catching up, haven't done the first permanent note yet? You know, I, I think it's. It's difficult because I know when people fall behind, it, it's, it starts piling up, especially when you got two hour, three hour videos. Sorry. Um, but just, just remember that the resource is always there. And yes, the shared graph takes forever to load. Um, I'm thinking about maybe just having everyone take their own blocks of their writing and just take that out now so we can have like a fast information graph left. But, you know, I can't force anyone to do that. But um, yeah, the information, the, the videos are there. The guided writing exercises are there. You can go back to it. RBC five starts in July. Um, and it's not, it's not a sprint, you know, it's a lifelong thing. And, you know, I've had, 
like Carol, I see Carol, like she doesn't, you don't, you've already hit critical mass, Carol, you know, and yet she's still, it's, it's, it's still coming back for it because it's like, you know, it's, it's always good to be reminded. And so again, if you feel like you've, you fell behind and, and, you know, just take your time, you know, let things marinate, like, like Joshua was talking about, like, let it simmer. And, you know, as you let it simmer, it'll start reducing. Um, but obviously, yeah, go ahead. But obviously it's, it's just, um, it's so much harder doing this alone, you know, building out a Zettelkasten in the digital realm. It's just so much harder doing it alone. So just trust in the friends that you've made in this process to be the ones that are going to hold you up during the hard, hard weeks and months of you building out your own notes. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, yeah, it's so hard. And my heart really goes it's out to the it. people. Go ahead. But it's worth it. Yeah. I, it don't, I don't have anything uh, inspirational. <laughs> I hate following Joshua and Alan. It's, it's really, really, really tough. But it, I did have an observation um, there's something that happened to me when I took my first two permanent notes out of the shared graph and put them into my newly constructed Zettelkast and a new fresh graph. Uh, uh, and uh, the text of the permanent notes were completely different. Hmm. One of the tags, one of the index, one index tag stayed, another index tag changed. So if you're grabbing, if you're grabbing your stuff, this is this is now for you. You're not really responding to other people's tags and other people's permanent notes. You're you're really you're responding to yourself now, or or setting up your first uh, your first initial uh, uh, main topics that you're going to want to talk about. So it's worth it's worth spending, not rushing with that. Mm. Excellent point. Don't rush it. Hurry up and go as slow as you can. Maybe on that note, I can kind of jump in here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Um, and just to say, I'm someone who, like, I've done that exact thing. Her, uh, did you just watch? Everyone just, let's just enjoy that my face just turned about 17 shades of red. There's your comedy for Sunday afternoon. Um, <laughs> I can speak as someone who really hurried up to slow down as fast as I could and slowed right the heck down. Mm. And I've really watched from the outside, you know, not necessarily being... Um, inside the graph and writing in it, but watching, um, even if I haven't been able to be here, watching back the recordings and letting them kind of play over and like, you know, maybe it sounds silly, but almost wash over. And something that I'm thinking about as we come to today's session is how many of us in that very first meeting shared a, a a bit of an imposter syndrome or a wondering about whether you know we were smart enough for this or whether we did have anything to say or whether we would be able to keep up etc and if you go back to those sort of initial why questions from i think day one or two and read back through there are a lot of people who wanted to build a sense of maybe self-respect, but also knowing that they could keep up with this. And when you hurry up to slow down and you slow right down, especially if you're someone who's used to being good at things, like mm. um, there's a humbling that comes with it, but there's also a sense of relief that comes with it. So I know um, in my case, my life just kind of um, got crazy and Rome was the thing that set off the table. And that was okay. That was a choice that I made. I knew that would happen. And I think that's probably happened for lots of people where they've missed days here or days there, or maybe they missed weeks or blocks or chunks or they fall behind. And then they maybe felt like, oh gosh, I failed. But the thing that's really neat about not only Rome, but about community is that net and the idea that perhaps the shared graph is the place where you just you can just come back to and sort of drink from 
and re-energize and then go forwards. Because what's important to remember about Rome, someone put in the chat earlier about the extensions, having a bit of like extension FOMO. And I love that it was called out that you don't actually need all the extensions to have a really wonderful functioning Rome graph because it's easy to get caught in all the extra and all the, the shoulding of what we should or could or maybe ought to be when in reality isn't the entire point of using the Rome tool to access your own brain, isn't it actually to know your own self better mm -hmm. rather than to extend beyond yourself and beyond your capacity? Isn't it actually to step into your own capacity first? So in a way, Joey's put in the chat a rumbling, humbling relief. And I think that I know for myself going forwards, and in a way I actually do have a bit of relief because I know now that I can sit back into the graph and come back to it when I'm ready, but it's, it's not about performing for other people. It's not about keeping up with Rome Book Club. It's not about keeping up with Bo or with appearances or trying to write for just to write. It's actually about like, what are we as individual people getting out of it? so that we can come back to the table, perhaps with something to offer, or perhaps with more clarity of ourselves. And I don't know about all of you, but I think that probably the best gift I can give myself in the entirety of my lifetime is actually to know myself and then to act in integrity with that. And so if you can externalize that through an application like Rome, it's not about being good at Rome, it's about being good at being yourself. Mm. Yes. And goodbye. <laughs> nice. Mm. Oh hell yes, Leah. Hell. Yes. <laughs> hell Russell, hell yes. my guy. <laughs> oh. We're twin souls. Oh my god. Me. Oh my goodness. Um, man, you know Rome isn't just like you know, on the website it says Rome, a tool used for network thought and over like the past five weeks, that sort of thing has transformed from something of just like a, an app where you used to like import your thoughts. Now mm -hmm. to me, like a tool for network thought is just like this, this community, man, like mm -hmm. everyone is like resonating all of these same things I've been like holding inside my head for so long. Like the sense of imposter syndrome, this sense of like not finding a voice, all of these things, like the fact that we're all discovering this together and we all get to share this with each other like this is this is the tool used for network thought like screw rome like jesus the rome book club is like ah uh, like this sort of this is something that you have to experience for yourself this is this is crazy because like at, when i started this like i never really had the intention of just like learning about this tool but really just to like find a community of people to talk about the things that are in my head and now, like, I guess it started out by having this conversation with myself, with my Zettel casting, because I felt like I didn't have the capacity to share this with other people. I'd rather just have this conversation with my conversation partner. That's what, like, got me into this. But now that, like, over these past few weeks, like, I've been brave enough to hear everyone else's stories in the rum reading room and having that, like, resonate within me over time, it, like, built up this sense of, like, bravery inside me to like share my own thoughts and just like be open with you guys that's jesus this is better than therapy what the f <laughs> no, it's a book club it's a book club what are you talking about no we're a book club oh my god what book are you reading i don't know the discovery of self <laughs> yeah it, it's really hard to say like what how much this community has changed who I thought of as a person and how I hope that this can like bring this gift back to you guys is really just it's incredible and there's only seven days left oh my god but you know what like I said 42 days this is just the beginning and I'm excited for whatever the hell like this community is going to bring to us next because we're, we're all on to something crazy and you know I was like thinking about like um what Bo said earlier about like um, I think it was like in his like inter intellect chat that he was like wanted to watch in like the first week about a place where people can congregate 
to exchange ideas. Like, I feel like this is like Paris 1910 or just like a, a, like a digital place for all of us to bring whatever we have onto the table and just exchange all of these ideas. And I never thought that this would like manifest itself with this book club, but here we are. Like, we're all really just like putting it out there and just letting it resonate with people. And like, who knows what the hell is gonna happen next, but we're putting it out there. That's crazy. <laughs> Learning how to human. Yes, Andy, my God. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I just I just wanted to gush with those five minutes, but thank you guys. <laughs> Can I just say the first week, I think, or the second week, Russell didn't want to say a boo to a goose, and it's just amazing to see how much, like, not just Russell, but so many people are just yeah, exactly. It's like talk about Rome Garden, yeah. Oh! It's just phenomenal, and it's and it's been great to be part of a community. And I don't know anything about the, I don't know half the stuff you guys talk about with the tech stuff, but just to be with some amazing, super intelligent humans who are just celebrating each other and encouraging each other and learning from each other. I, and I've discovered I, I don't need to read a book to join a book club, and this tool can reflect my brain. And uh, I didn't know what a Zettel Custom was. I just thought, oh, I want to take better notes. I didn't, didn't understand that would create a Zettel Custom, which is going to rock my whole world. So yeah, it's amazing that I think uh, Vargas said about, you know, no matter what level you're at, I came in as probably the back runner, just cheering everyone on because that's the only bit I could do. And just to be able to learn is just phenomenal. So thank you for embracing all ends of the spectrum. I mean, Nikki, you're such an integral part of this community. I feel like you're kind yes. of like the RBC mom. Like, you're incredible. I just want to say that out loud so that people who are watching this in the future knows that, like, you are it. So thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki. I'll take that. I'll be an RBC mom at any day. Can I have that on my T-shirt? <laughs> oh, poppy mom. Mm -hmm. MIT represent. Really Love that. <laughs> I think it was good. It was a good litmus test too, just just Sorry, because. Well, I, I think it was a good litmus test of 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 the effectiveness of the book RBC as well because Nikki wasn't a power user of Rome, you know. But I see her permanent notes in the shared graph; they're impeccable. And guess what you're doing? You're utilizing every single fundamental primitive of Rome research. Had a great teacher. Mm -hmm. George, what's up? What do you think? Who are you asking? You. <clears throat> I'm just uh, taking it all in. Mm. It's, uh, you know, you've been screwing around with our thinking. <laughs> 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 yes, and, and kind of rewiring our brains, and it's uh, kind of taken me a few of the last steps on been on this journey for a long, long, long time. Written, written several several books and all that, and always knew that the usual way of note taking is just awful. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I. I, I I've been for many decades writing without knowing what I'm writing. Am I writing an article? Am I writing a book? Am I writing an essay? Am I writing for myself? Am I going to put it in an email? Well, you know, what the hell is the form? What is this thing? I've been sort of writing paragraphs. And uh, we're all, you know, there's the old expression that uh, when the teacher is, um, when the, sorry, when, when, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So Rome has appeared, you have appeared, the G GPT-3 has appeared, a whole lot of things, like six things have appeared within months. Yeah, Just right. exactly like when I'm ready for them. Mm -hmm. Really spooky. Mm -hmm. So- uh, It's a moment in time, like Russell was talking about. Yeah, thank you, thank you for it. Um, and thanks for the permission to do it our way, 
because I'm not quite doing it your way. I feel like I'm kind of cheating behind the scenes and I'm going for a lot of times from um, fleeting notes to permanent notes. Seems that my brain is full of either fleeting notes, uh, you know, weird realizations or something to, to permanent notes. And you can look at my tweets. I got like 13,000 tweets in six, about seven months now. Um, they're all over the place. They all have to do with mind skills, but they're all over the place. No particular organization. I've been um, just getting comfortable with that because I had huge hierarchies in Devon Think and in um, Scrivener and all the hierarchical tools, which are brilliant, which are wonderful. Then I went to the brain. So I had graphic interconnections with no root node. So it's a, it's a mind map. If you can imagine a mind map where you don't have to decide where the trunk is, where the roots are, where the branches are, whatever node you're on is the heart of it. You know, and I've been looking for that for a long time when they invented that. So I've been, it was revelation. So I've been using that for like 12 years. Um, but I'm all using, I'm now I'm just basically using Rome, doing, doing everything, except for the huge amount of gigs and gigs and gigs of stuff I have in, in Devon Think, where I've just been dumping books and websites and anything that intrigued me into Devon Think. I'm not going to take that out. But thanks for this overview and this direction. Really, really, really appreciate it. And, I'm not going to give up my graph, um, but I'm going to, I am, you know, I have started the permanent notes thing and I'm structuring it within the graph. It sits there very well. I mean, no, yes. no reason why anyone needs to start over. You just take a bunch of ramblings and label fleeting, fleeting notes and now you're doing Bo's thing. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I think it's, it's this idea of nothing's ever lost. Yes. You know, and, and it's, it's like in regards to like all the different ways that we've learned how to think and, and learn up to this point, nothing is ever lost. And I, I just feel like if you have the confidence to go, this is my thought, I know where, you know, this is my crystallized thought, then it goes in there. You know, there is no right or wrong. It's what, it, what fits you in your lifestyle and, and, and you and your workflow. You know, so you don't have to do all of the fleeting note abstractions. I just wanted to make sure that I touched upon everything. So when you left here, that you had perfect practice, right? But once you've mastered it, then it's like, you know how to, you know, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. then it's yeah. like, it's easy. Yeah, it's simple. skills versus simple. content. Hmm. You know, you're really, we're really concentrating on the skills. The content takes care of itself. Kind of. mm -hmm. Uh, hi, I, this is Marcelo from Portugal. I just wanted to jump in uh, to give a testimonial <laughs> like that. I don't know. Well, uh, last Monday, I DM'd Bo about some concerns I was having because uh, last live session, I felt jealous about everybody because I thought I was the only one who had not had that uh, whoa moment. Everybody seemed to be, whoa, yeah, this is Zedel Kasten. And I was just, uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't get it. <laughs> but um, I just want to say that I have right now just written my first permanent note. And I made some connections and I was reading through the uh, the shared Zero Kasten and whoa yeah uh, yeah this is a thing this is what I was looking for yes exactly uh, we can find so many knowledge in that database may I call it that I don't know but uh, yes I, I was just reading and now I 
I, I just want to link everything to my notes and I want to do it more. And yes, I, I'm one week late, but <laughs> I'm catching up. I, I think it's uh, uh, if life doesn't get in the way too much this week, maybe I can <laughs> get, can get up to to the tasks and writing more and making some more notes. I, I'm happier now. <laughs> it's it, it was a true click, and ah, yeah, that's it. So it's wonderful, wonderful feeling, and thanks, Bo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Marcelo, remember, you only have to be better than you, right? You don't have to be better than anybody else. You make one more step today than you made yesterday, and you are making progress, my friend. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I also wanted to share. Um, so this is the very first book club I've ever joined. And the reason that I felt brave enough to even join in the first place is because I actually read the entire book first and then heard about this book club. I was like, oh, okay, I, I think I have an understanding. And then I came and I was like, I didn't even need to read the book. What the heck? But, <laughs> but I really appreciate because after I finished reading, I was like, yeah, this sounds wonderful. I would love to have this tool to help me in my life but I still don't really get how to do it. it. Sanke says it's simple, but it doesn't seem simple for me at all. So I really appreciate us walking through, even Bo, you're saying the lectures and you know the dry stuff, but that's like, that's the foundational stuff that I needed. And then I also found, it, found things that I didn't know I needed, which is an amazing community like you guys. And not only now do I feel more confident writing or creating as at all casting, which is what I wrote on my first day. Actually, I went back to what do I want from this? And it was like to have more confidence in knowing that I know how to create a Zettel casting that will help me think more clearly. And, and now I have, I have that, but in addition to that, I have the community. And on top of that, I even have, you know, through all the prompts, I'm seeing immediate changes in my actual real life too. And being in these video Zooms with you guys, like I have so much anxiety speaking in public, like even a group like this, I'm super extroverted and very, very vocal when it's like in a small group or one-on-one, -on -one. but when it's a group like this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna crawl in the corner. Um, and a lot of things like you guys have been saying, you know, like, I don't know if my voice matters, I don't know if other people are even thinking about this. Am I weird? Um, but after the writing prompts, after being here with all you guys each week, um, I've gotten a lot more courage, but also recognizing that it doesn't even need to be a courage. Like I'm not doing it for other people necessarily. I'm like, I can find the strength within myself. And through the prompts, I've also found the reasons why, you know, my motivations for why I would speak up, you know, things like that. And for me, it's personally inclusion and, and showing people that, you know, there are people out there who understand them. Um, so anyways, what I'm saying, trying to say is I've gotten so much more out of this than I ever could have imagined. So thank you, Bo, for putting it together. And thank you all of you guys for everything that you guys are contributing and doing and just for being here. I so appreciate you guys. My candle is on fire right now. Hey, Bo, think about it. How many people spend their whole life and maybe only make a small impact on just their families or a few other people? Look how many people you're making an impact here. Just look at the participants. Look at the graph. That's a legacy, man. It's pretty awesome. You know, when you say that, though, it still doesn't. It's not like, dude, it's, it's like I am just another cog of all these beautiful things that are happening around us right now. Son K writing the book in 2017, Connor with Rome, you know, Matt McKinley with Rome Book Club, me slotting in right there, you know, RBC3 alumni hitting critical mass, and then RBC4 coming in, and then RBC5 coming in. It's like, this is so much bigger. 
and yeah, but it's, every uh, chemical reaction needs a catalyst, Bo. Yeah, then I, I will. I will be that tough love catalyst, and maybe it's just because I have patience, you know, to to let people fight me. Yes, you know, because not everyone wants to hear that their thinking can be better, and shallow, so shallow, shallow. Yeah, you know, it's every time CK would DM me, I'm like, no, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not going to give you the answers. I don't want to ruin it. And so if, if anything, it's just that, you know, my resiliency to not give in. So I think, what, you know, all of this is mind blowing to me. And I think something really crystallized once I heard Carol's critical mass. And then I heard Dave's, uh, David Hislop's critical mass. And that's in the last week, there was two critical masses from RBC3 alumni. And the fantastic feeling. Yeah. And you have to realize that that's literally the first two people that have ever experienced what we're talking about here because I experienced it. And then I didn't know if it was bullshit or not. I believed it. I had vision that it was it. But then Carol hit it. Dave hit it. We have more RBC3 alumni about to hit it. And it's that feeling of, holy crap. I can offload my thinking. And so welcome. You're about to be right there. And I encourage everyone, you know, RBC five starts in July. It's summertime. It's summer school. I want all variety of people in that one. You know, I'll probably split it up into two graphs, but I feel like, you know, if this is summer school and you can get as many of your friends and family involved, it's free, you know, get as many of your friends and family involved. I'm, I'm going to hype the hell out of it too. I'm going to start making videos during this month off and just have everyone ready for when the fall semester starts. It's post COVID the first year post COVID, you know, you have a, a way to write notes. This could be the thing. This could be the thing that really shifts the pendulum to go echo chambers and ivory towers to cloud communities and thinking for our thinking for ourselves. Um, hey, here. I, I uh, uh, thanks to Andy Henson, I now have a poem. Come on. Uh, um, uh, uh, this is going to, this is going to wrap us up. Okay. I'm done. I'm tired. Oh, I need to eat something, but Joey's going to bring us out. Thank you again to David Vargas, Vlad, Justin Mather. Thank you again. Everyone that showed up, keep writing permanent notes and Joey, will you take us out? Sure. No title for this one. Um, and this is from, from everything, <laughs> from, from the chat and people talking and all, all the random stuff. Uh, only do what you enjoy as you understand the past to grasp the future. Mastering the fundamentals of thought at the cutting edge, from physical to digital to Rome, we feel a sense of belonging, that fantastic feeling in our bi-directional community as our thoughts move from within us to within our graph, from personal to public, where they mingle and dance with the thoughts of others, returning to enrich us in unexpected ways. In the graph, they form a critical mass until they explode in supernovae of growth and understanding as we, watch, as, as we both watch from the outside, vulnerable, open, sharing, feeling a rumbling, humbling relief as we entwine in a net of humanity, allowing our universe to work its magic as we bring into being a, shared, a new shared reality, born of our common experience, our beautiful sharing, our poignant tears of self-revelation as we grow together, learning to be human. Mm. Fabulous. Yeah, we're not gonna top that. Thank you again, everyone. I love you all.
I will see you uh, again. I'm going to have coaching sessions all week. I'll have three uh, group coaching sessions. Sign up. Uh, I'll post it to the shared graph or DM me uh, tonight and I'll post, uh, I'll send you a link um, at 1230. So same time as the live session, but for tomorrow. So 1230 PM Pacific standard time, I'll post it to the shared graph or DM me and I'll give you a direct link to the Calendly. And then we'll just do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for people that are sort of like struggling with maybe just other questions that they have. And yeah. Let's finish strong. We've got another week here. Um, I like the whole goal is to get you to start your own Zettelcast. And, and then I'll have the CSS and the template stuff in there tonight or by the time day 37 uh, video goes up. And thank you again. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And that's it. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for organizing Bye. both. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Oh, thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye. Bye. folks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was awesome. Bye. Be well. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.